It's a new month and a new week. Welcome to the AM News. My name is Pakwesi Shandoff. National security operatives have arrested the leader of an Islamic group in Karaga accused of having links to a jihadist group in Burkina Faso. Imam Sidi Dukuri was arrested along with 12 of his followers in a special operation on Saturday. Security sources who confirmed the arrest to join you say they have since been moved in, into custody in Tamale pending investigation. This is the second time members of the group and its leader have been arrested by national security correspondent Ilias Utanko now reports. Sheikh Sidi Dukuri is a prominent Fulani cleric based in Karga in the northern region where he is the imam of a mosque he established as a chronic learning center where learners from across the neighboring countries come to study the Quran and listen to his preachings. The imam has a lot particularly among members of the Fulani community. However, on Saturday, October 1st, the imam and his group were the target of a national security operation in which he was arrested along with 12 of his followers. The General Secretary of a Fulani Welfare Group, Tabit al Pulaku, Al Haji Yaqub Musa Bari, confirmed the arrest to join news. Our rep in the northern region called me around 11, 11 something that Sheikh Sidi Dukri has been picked up by some security men. Al Haji Musa Bari said the reason for his arrest was yet to be ascertained as the security services were still silent on the operation. However, this is the second time the Imam and his followers had been arrested by operatives from the National Security Agency. He was first arrested in 2019 along with 20 of his followers at the same location at Nangong in the Karga town. At the time, the Sheikh was accused of having been linked to a jihadist group in Burkina Faso after the Burkina Bay Army in a firefight killed five jihadist militants who had all listed him as their emergency contact in Ghana. The Burkina Bay Intelligence Agency alerted the Ghanaian government, which arrested him and brought him to Accra for questioning. However, after barely three weeks in custody, the Sheikh and his followers were all released without any charges against them. Although the reason for this latest arrest is yet to be communicated, Al Haji Musabari said his group was awaiting an official statement from the security services while pledging to support any investigation into the matter. We know uh, before a national security or the security agencies will come for you, there might be a reason and then we are waiting to hear the reason why he was picked up. From Nalirgo, Elias Sutanko reporting for Joy News. Now away from that, the Ghana Revenue Authority is warning that tighter sanctions will be applied on businesses that may attempt to temper with the virtual system for deploying the seamless electronic VAT invoice GRE is expected to begin the use of the system this month to prevent fraud and fake invoicing in the country. Chief Revenue Officer at the Office of the Commissioner General Nathaniel Tete tells Joy Business that efforts are being put in place to deal with unscrupulous individuals who may disrupt the system. It's an electronic system. We, we pray that nobody tampers with our system. Uh, it is part the uh, machine that ma machine no lie. That's what they say. So whatever you input into the machine will come, or the electronic device we will come and check. And if it is, nothing is tampered with, that means you are right with the law. And maybe we will come and appreciate your effort, and we will urge you to continue. But it, it's an advice that Commissioner General gave out that when you start using the machine, use it. Uh, holistically, purposely for uh, every uh, service you render or what you have to charge. So we advise that please, those who are starting with the EVAT, we may not, it's not everybody that may start, but those who are starting, we beg, GRA begs you, Ghana Revenue Authority begs you, please holistically use the electronic device. Don't temper with it and you'll be right with the law and nothing will happen to you. If you are registered to charge VAT and you are issuing your own invoice, I'm mentioning here that it is a criminal offense. You are going against the tax laws. And now GRA is taking, will be uh, prosecuting those who we are able to confirm that they are issuing their own invoice. Please, you are diverting government uh, monies into your coffers and 
Diverting money, government money, is a, a big offense. Let me use the word. It's a gargantuan offense. So please, uh, let's start from here. If you are doing it, you stop. If you have issued and then you, you've issued on your own invoices for your own sake and civic uh, responsibility, please, you can come and report yourself that uh, you've issued your own invoices. We sit down and calculate whatever you should have charged. Then we allow you to. The government has been urged to provide sufficient funding for public basic schools in the country as the non-payment of capitation grants is having a devastating effect on the running of schools challenging heights. A child-focused NGO believes government's inability to pay the capitation grant and the resource, resource to beg your pardon, the basic schools is affecting the quality of public basic education in the country. Chief Executive Officer of the organization, James Kofi Annan, was speaking at the 15th anniversary of the Odo Biba Academy in the Central Region. There's more on the following report. According to Challenging Heights, the data they recently collected across the five regions of the country, including the Central Region, pointed to a cumulative payment parents of the public basic schools are making. Such payment, the organization says, sometimes adds up to more than 1,000 Ghana cities per child, far in excess of the fees charged in some private basic schools. CEO of Challenging Heights, James Kofiana, indicates some payment made by these public basic schools include students' desk, PTA dues, sports fees, ICT, examination fees, excursions, and so on. Public basic school teachers, he says, are facing severe challenges being able to deliver effective teaching while the students are facing serious challenges doing effective learning. Speaking at the 15th anniversary of the Odoberba Academy at Winneba in the Central Region, Mr. Annan indicated government should not neglect the basic schools. We have evidence to show that even in the public school, some of the children are required to pay something to provide school desk, PTA, ICT, to pay examination fees. But the schools are supposed to be free. Headmistresses and headmasters are forced to do that because the capitation grant, which is supposed to be released for the running of the schools, do not come when they are supposed to come. We have seen that this is what is making a lot of children unable to go to school because even in the public school, they are supposed to still do something by way of contributing desk in order to go to school. As somebody who benefited from quality public education, I feel scandalized that education is more and more becoming the preserve, especially quality education, is becoming a preserve of the rich. Because everyone is taking their children to the private schools. A Futu Municipal Director of Education, Mabel Judith Michael, called for increased investment in the education front to prepare the children for the future. Albert Einstein is credited with noting so simply and eloquently. We can solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. Our educational system must prepare our future generations to embrace us increasingly complex and dynamic world to preserve and strengthen the cohesiveness of our society. This goes beyond providing our, knowledge, uh, our learners with academic knowledge. Area head of the Church of Pentecost, Winneba, Apostle Samuel Otu Apia, entreated parents to be the first role models of their children by supporting the efforts of their teachers. As a way of empowering and supporting the education of girls, the founder of the school has made a deliberate policy to discount the fees paid by girls. Reporting for Joy News, Richard Kwejunyakon, Cape Coast. Mastercard Foundation scholars at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, KNUST, have been encouraged to take advantage of social media to lift their entrepreneurial activities. Chief Executive Officer of Clothing Brand, Kweku Outlook, Isaac from Paul Manson, was worried about the abuse of social media platforms 
Badayudu was speaking at the 2022 Mastercard Foundation Scholars Program Summer Camp aimed at boosting career development of scholars. MCFSP, since its inception in 2014, has been organizing summer camp training programs for its scholars to equip them with skills to stand out in the corporate world. The two-week-long skills training program is meant to train scholars in various entrepreneurial disciplines. The training program is to expose scholars to soft skills which will stimulate the entrepreneurial potentials for societal benefit. Lead for Mastercard Foundation at KNUST, Professor Kofi Wusudaku was optimistic of the gains from the program. Um, so it's a two-week program after they have finished their exams in the second year. The first week uh, is a summer school in which we invite people uh, who are skillful in a, a variety of things, uh, including satellite installation, programming, uh, batik tie and dye making, uh, uh, what the women, bead making, um, the thing, yeah, catering, makeup and that kind of thing. Um, so, and they, you do it for four years. And so what we are saying is that by the time you go through the four years, you have made up your mind what you want to do. Uh, we don't think that within the two weeks of training, you become an expert. Uh, there are some people who can't wait. Uh, they are motivated by these workshops and they go there grabbing and we have... In a mentoring session, Mr. Frimpong also took the students through client relationship, financial management and customer care, amongst others. He advised them to put priority on producing exquisite wares in order to realize substantial revenue. What they do is come and twerk. Come and twerk. For what? Whilst you can use the same platform to, have, to make money. But unfortunately for you, you may be in the less essential market. It means that you are producing something like clothes, jewelry, basketry, um, shoes. You can name them. Now, what you don't realize is everybody spends on these things on their disposable income. What is left after they have filled their stomach. So it means that your product should be something they want before they will buy. And especially in these times, that times are difficult. Your product is not what we want. Nobody is going to come for your product. The scholars will be exposed to various soft skills training, including makeup artistry, satellite installation, beading, tie and dye, and batik or screen painting. Others are catering, soap making, packaging, app development, introduction to graphic design, mushroom farming, wig making, yogurt production, and photography and video editing. The prison officer in charge of the female stores and estates at the Tamale Prison CSP, Alassan Andara, is asking government to support the prison service with a bus to resolve transportation challenges. She says the outfit has one bus that serves the five regions of the north, making movement difficult any time the bus is taken to any of the regions for work. But Tina Bugri has more in the following report. ASP Ala Hassan. Andara raised the concern of transport at a ceremony when Alan Special Lady donated some items funded by Ajia Fadila Tahiru to female inmates of the prison to mark the 60th birthday of the trade minister. The items included assaulted drinks, sanitary pads, soap, toilet roll, among others. That's the only service car maybe bus that we have and it serves the northern region and the now uh, all the three or the four northern regions. When Nagongo wants something, they want something to do it. Nagongo comes in for it, Salaga comes in for it. So like we all use it. So whenever there are issues and this maybe funeral, wedding naming ceremony, that is what we use. So I would love that if we get a bigger one than this, uh, they'll be able to help us attend in our numbers to help our colleagues. ASP Andara also appealed to government to provide the center with a septic tank to help dispose fecal waste at the prisons. The government is doing enough, but we would have also wished that, you see, we have um, 
our toilet here in Tamale um, Central. The disposal, when it is full, how to dispose it is always a problem because we don't have a toilet tank. So if maybe we get that, that one would have helped. Handing over the items to the prisons, the Northern Regional President of the Alan Special Ladies, Jawhara Abdulaziz, said the group decided to support the inmates as part of the birthday celebration of the Trade Minister. We are here this morning at the Tamale Main Prison Office to donate an item coming from our aspirant, the flag bearer of, uh, or the incoming flag bearer of MPP. Our father has uh, given us uh, soap, uh, the toilet roll, uh, sanitary pad, drinks, and then a uh, biscuit to be given to our dear sisters in the prison office to tell them that uh, he's fully aware of them and wherever we take the mandate of the flag bearer, he will, inshallah do more to help them. That's all for the bulletin this morning. For more, log on to www.myjoyonline.com. My name is Pakwesi Shandoff. I leave you now in the company of Benjamin Akapo and, of course, Mapito CBD. Stay. Hiya, good morning. Good morning to my Peter CVD as well. Good morning, Benjamin. How are you? I'm okay. Start of a new week. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're in a new month. What does October mean for you? My birthday. Oh. Yeah. Um, would you like to tell us on which day? Uh, next week, Monday, on the 10th. Okay. Yeah. Wait. Then you are October's own. Yeah. You know why? 10-10. Mm -hmm. Of course. 10th day of the 10th month. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday in advance. Thank you. God richly bless you. You're one fabulous person, yeah? Oh, thank you. So, of course, October is, is the month of plenty in some, I mean, September, October. Uh, and it, it's, it's very significant, 10, in terms of its numerical meaning spiritually. <sighs> it's a wonderful birthday, right? A wonderful month in which to be born. So it's anyway. also our producer's anniversary. Wedding anniversary, 1010. I, I was going to pay him no mind. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, he, he, was, he was trying to do a shushenim, but uh, yes, it's his anniversary yeah. <laughs> as well. Derek Ekosa, one fantastic person, but you may be the angel. All I know. We'll take him soon. We'll anyway, welcome later. aboard the news review segment. My pizza, we have quite a number of papers we're about to get into, mm -hmm. but. Um, before we do, just a quick look at some of what to expect on the show today. Just to reiterate, of course, we'll be joined shortly by Executive Director uh, for the Media Foundation for West Africa, Suleiman Abraima. We'll be talking about the ECG and the prepaid meters mm -hmm. saga, mm -hmm. which has been resolved, I mean, from today, but we'll see how that pans out. We'll also be contemplating, like I said, I'll be going to Kanishi where, in fact, I'm going to be interacting with some people. Now, yesterday, something rather curious happened in a clear, a blatant case of offensive conduct mm -hmm. by a police officer okay, who actually discharged a firearm. I'll be getting into that as I go um, out and about. And then we'll be talking about the unprecedented traffic on the Tema to Pram Pram or vice versa stretch. I used to use that stretch mm -hmm. uh, to work and it, it, it was terrible. Uh, Michael Papani Ashali will be joining us from there. And then we'll bring you details of our latest hotline documentary, Dex Destruction for Gold. Erastus Sassari Donko, my colleague, has been on that beat and we're talking about Galamsey and more. So look forward to these on the show. But let's get into the papers now uh, and say a very good morning to Suleimana. Good morning, Mr. Braimer. Good morning, Ben. Mapito Sibidi is here as well. We'll be uh, interacting with you. Hope you're well, sir. Yes, I'm doing well. I trust you're well, too. By God's grace. Thank you. 
Great. It's the start of a new week. All right, so we'll be getting into the papers now. I have the Ghanaian Times Daily Guide, the Daily Statesman. Mapito? I have the Daily Graphic, the Finder, and the Publisher. All right, so let me get into the Ghanaian Times for starters. And um, police nab 16 over Galamse shootings. That story is on page three of the Ghanaian Times newspaper. Then there is GRA Digital VAT invoicing takes off today, set to eliminate abuse, increase revenue mm -hmm. that story is on page 16 then there's heavy rains destroy property disrupt outdoor events at weekend nationwide event grounds deserted during the rains and um <clears throat> i know that for a fact because i was at uh two events over the weekend one of which i was mc for and trust me it delayed the program by quite a bit Mm -hmm. Of course, some people would not show up, but uh, that event turned out to be rather, you know, beautiful, a rather successful one. There's also Echo as AU condemn coup d'etat in Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. It appears it's um, coup after coup. Uh, anyway, so let's get into that, that major story on page three. At least 16 people are in the grips of the Eastern Regional Police Command for their alleged involvement in a shooting incident at Asamantafo in the Eastern Region. You may have seen some videos. Now, the police in a statement issued on Friday said the incident occurred between some persons alleged uh, to be illegal minors and a community anti galamse task force in the area on September the 29th, 2022. Signed by the Public Relations Officer of the Eastern Regional Police Command, Superintendent Ebenezer Tete. The statement said the police had retrieved one pump action gun, two excavators, two water pumps, and a battery. Efforts, according to the police statement, were underway to arrest the remaining suspects and retrieve any other weapons in their possession. The statement added that the police had also seen a viral video on the incident, which was being reviewed as part of the investigations. It assured the public, I'll end here, that all other perpetrators would be arrested and brought to face justice. Your take, uh, Suleimana, on so you could weave that into the fact that we've had that meeting of five regional ministers, uh, I believe Eastern, Western, Ahafo, I think Ahafo North, what, and, and Ashanti. Five of them, I, I, I may have got one or two wrong, meeting with the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources on this issue of Galamse. And then again, Otunforce to the second, the Asantehene recently uh, re-echoing re that stance, so to speak, that chiefs are not to blame, parrying the blame from the chiefs when it comes to Galamse and saying that institutions should work and all of that. I find that curious, though, because some months back, he seemed to suggest, speaking with Nananum around him, mm -hmm. that they knew of goings-on when it came to Galamse. I don't know, so many dynamics. What's your take, uh, Suleiman? Well, um... <coughs> It's a, it's a very, very worrying development. Um, uh, when the president mentioned some time ago that he was willing to put his presidency on the line mm. uh, in the fight against the um, I don't know exactly what he meant, but my expectation would have been that if this was how things was going to be, or were going to be, then perhaps the president would acknowledge that I have failed in that endeavor, and therefore putting my presidency on the line would mean that I cease being the president. When sometimes I hear people talk about the fight against Galamse and that we are continuing the fight against Galamse, I ask myself if this is the result of a fight, then what would have been the situation if we were not fighting it at all? Mm. So the issue of Galamse uh, has, I mean, certainly gotten out of hand. And it's really a sad development. I can understand the two force perspective. I think the point that he's trying to make is that even if chiefs are involved, chiefs are not above the law. We all operate with the same constitution. And in terms of natural resources, they are held in trust on behalf of the people by the president. And so if we have a situation where we say, oh, the local chiefs are involved, and therefore, that is why it's gotten out of hand. Are we then saying that if there is, you know, an escalation of armed robbery situation in our country or other, other forms of crime and chiefs are involved, then we say, oh, because chiefs are involved, there's nothing that we can do. Or as, as leadership, what we do is to blame the chiefs because they are involved in armed robbery 
or they are involved in stealing, or they are involved in destroying our cocoa uh, plantations, and all of that. So Otufo is basically saying, look, the laws must work. And he asks, where, where is leadership from national to regional to district? There's a reason why we have a president. There's a reason why we have regional ministers, and there are reasons why we have district chief executive. So if all these people are there, and they are supposed to hold the natural resources in trust on behalf of the people, and the natural resources are being destroyed, you know, land, water bodies, our forest reserves are being destroyed, and all we do is to point accusing fingers at, at chiefs and, you know, at, at party people without ensuring that the laws are working, then suddenly we are not doing our work. I read last, uh, over the weekend that the lands minister had instructed that the Forestry Commission should, you know, uh, ban a certain company from operating in the forest reserves. Then the, the question that I asked was... Are, are you referring oh, to Akunta Mining? Yes, Akunta Mining, and, uh, right. and I'm told it's owned by the Asante Regional Chairman of the MPP. Mm. I, I'm wondering whether it is just realized that it is now that this thing is happening. It's been happening all this while. And they know, this thing, as I said some time ago, constituency chairman, constituency organizers, regional chairman, regional organizers, sometimes even district chief executives are involved. And they know, and these chief executives are still at post. The president invited these ministers. Is it that the ministers didn't know that these things are happening within their jurisdiction? Is it that the president over the, over the period, the last maybe two years or so, didn't know that these things are happening in the jurisdiction of these ministers? If what they have to do is, uh, 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 if what they have to do includes protecting the natural resources that they are supposed to be holding in trust of the people, and they have failed <clears throat> and have gotten out to this situation, why hasn't the president fired anybody? I, I can't understand. I, are you suggesting, uh, Suleimana, just a quick one. Are you suggesting that uh, then maybe a blind eye has been turned to the menace because party people themselves are involved? Is that what you're suggesting? No, I think that from all levels, <clears throat> the, the, what we are seeing is just gimmicks, you know, and, and public defeat of a seeming fight against Galante. I don't think that... If we were to have a leader or leadership that is truly and honestly committed to the fight, the fight <coughs> against the state, we would be witnessing what we are witnessing. Where our river water bodies have turned, you know, the color, you see it and you wonder what is happening. And our leaders travel across the country. They see it. So if this is the result of a fight... Then I really don't know if, if we were not fighting um, Galante. I think that is all about gimmicks. Party people are in it. At some point, we were told party here, Sika. The party needs money. You know, party leaders are involved. And across the districts, they will tell you, look, if you are not connected to the party, there is no way you will be allowed into, you know, any, any place to do whether... Sometimes even legitimate mining will be difficult for you. So I, I really think that you know, the president may not be serious about the fight against Galante. Because why? Aisha one has happened. You know, rivers, rivers are turning brown. Um, forest reserves are being destroyed. And no single person has been fired. No single person, you know, has been fired by the president. So Aisha one, is it the case that nobody could be held responsible for what happened? That the person has been repatriated? Then suddenly we realize that the person is in town for, for months? And nobody is responsible, not the immigration, not the, 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 the people manning our borders. I mean, you can't understand. So how do we take the, the president serious on this fight? I don't think that there is that serious commitment towards the fight. It's all, all, all we are seeing is just gimmicks and, and public deceit to say that we are fighting, we are fighting. And I clearly understand uh, the position of Otufo. That if you say you are fighting, fight it and let's see. If a chief has committed, arrest the chief. If a chief has committed, prosecute the chief. I don't think that a chief is allowed to destroy our water bodies or our, our natural resources because they are a chief. So, um, unfortunately, that's where we are. Maybe if going forward we will see some positive action, um, we can only pray for that. Interesting. So right, right now, you seem to be very pessimistic about the fight against Galamse. Is, is it one that you feel we could win at any point in time? Well, very we can win if that. the president really uh, becomes realistic with 
whatever he says about the fight against Galante. Because if you have put people in charge, and this is what is happening, and you wouldn't even sack one person to serve as an example or to serve as a deterrent to others, then how serious will we take you? Regional ministers are there. District chief executives are there. Where all these mining is taking place, you have people there. You have people who are representing you. And the future of this country is being destroyed. And we are looking on and just making promises, talking big. And every day we are fighting Galamse. Our water bodies are going. Our forest reserves are going. People are cutting. The other day I saw a, a video on, on, on one of the social media platforms where, where somebody was saying, look, it is my cocoa and I'm cutting it. Yes, and I apparently saw that the land too. is being used for Galamse. That is where we have gotten to. So I don't think that we've been serious about it. And if, if indeed we have lost, because where we are, if we were fighting it, then we've lost the battle. And we need to admit that we've lost it. So then we see what steps can be taken. But if we say we are fighting, every day we are fighting, mm. and the thing is getting worse by the day, then where is the evidence of the fight? Uh, Suleiman Abraima says we should admit we've lost the battle. He calls all that is happening gimmicks, and he says uh, there is public deceit going on. Let me wrap with this final story. ECOWAS AU condemned coup d'etat in Burkina Faso, and the Economic Community of West African States and the African Union have condemned the current military takeover in Burkina Faso, describing it as a setback to the restoration of constitutional rule. The two organizations have also asked uh, the military junta to refrain from acts of violence and comply with laid down processes agreed with transitional authorities to return the country to constitutional order by July the 1st, 2024. This was contained in a separate uh, statement or in separate statements issued by ECOWAS Chairman Guinea Bissau's President Umaro Sisoko Mbalo and AU Commission Chairperson Musa Faki Maham at the weekend. In the country's second coup in a year, Burkina Faso military leader Paul Henri Damiba was on Friday deposed as Army Captain Ibrahim Traore took charge, dissolving the transitional government and suspending the constitution. Uh, so we've seen back-to-back -back coups in the sub-region. Very worrying development. We've also heard our own ECOWAS uh, chair, Nanado Dankwe Okofuado, speak to those issues. But it appears the turmoil is not going anywhere anytime soon. Quick reactions, Sule? Well, it's a very, another troubling situation in our region. Mm. Um, further evidence of the democratic recession that we are witnessing um, in, in Africa generally. Mm. Of course, it wasn't, it, or it isn't the case that there was a, a civilian leader there. So it's a military person taking over from, you know, another coup regime. What they would call uh, a palace school. Yes. So uh, one would say that, well, we haven't moved. We are still where we are. But I think that our, our regional and continental uh, leaders need to really act in ways that uh, clearly support mm -hmm. the position of the ordinary people. Mm. Now, number one. We all know what is happening in the Sahel region. You know, right now, as we speak, almost 50% of Burkina Faso is under the command and control of these rebel groups or the terrorists. About 50% of the country is gone. Now, of course, I know behind the scenes work is going on, diplomatic engagement, security engagement, peacekeeping missions, and all of that. But people would want to see much more robust intervention from our region. For example, why hasn't there been uh, a joint ECOWAS, you know, um, uh, peacekeeping uh, mission or attempts to combat whatever is happening in the Sahel region? Why, has, how, why haven't we pulled our troops together, our resources together to intervene? At what point would we do that? So that for me, is one area that we are not doing well. The second is um, what is happening in some of these countries. For example, if you take Guinea, which is under sanctions now from ECOWAS, ECOWAS looked on when Afa Conde was changing the constitution, as a result of which people who needed to defend the dem democratic 
uh, uh, resume there, decided to do what we expect all citizens to do, rise up and defend your constitution and defend your democracy. In the process of doing that, more than 100 people were killed by Afa Conde's regime. ECOWAS was looking on. Eventually, when the constitution was changed, and then Afa Conde won that, you know, election. He was inaugurated. Our president, the then ECOWAS, ECOWAS chairman, was there to bless it. Uh, president Ouattara of Cote d'Ivoire has done it. When he won the election, people died in an attempt to defend the constitution, to ensure that this third term agenda did not work. People died. ECOWAS looked on. When he won the election, our president as ECOWAS chairman was there to bless it. Togo, the man has been there all right. these years, as if it's a monarchical state. Mm. I'm told, I was reading this morning that... We moved from Yassinbe and now his son, for Eyadema yes. is also... Yes, for Eyadema. He's there. Ekowaz is looking on. He will change the constitution and continue to be on. So sometimes it then provides a justification for the military to say, if you say you want democracy, this is not democracy. Right. A coup d'etat against the constitution is a coup d'etat. Like uh, uh, Afa Conde did, like right. Ouattara did, mm. like the uh, Foreign Assembly has done. So why do we look on until when the military then intervenes, they go under sanctions. And the sad thing is that if you look at Guinea, people died in the attempt to rise to defend the constitution. They got no support. After the person who abused the constitution got onto power, ECOWAS endorsed him. Then after that, the military intervenes, ECOWAS says, we have imposed sanctions. The sanctions does not affect Afa Conde. The sanctions affect the same people who suffered to try to defend the constitution and failed. Now they are the ones enduring the suffering under ECOWAS sanctions. So if we look at it this way, I think our leaders have a lot to do. Democracy must be working for the people. Democracy shouldn't be seen to be working for individual leaders. But right now, it appears that is what it is, that our leaders get onto power and they do all they want with our resources, with our money. People are suffering. And then that then motivates the military to do what they shouldn't do, which is to take over power mm. you know, in a way that is unconstitutional. We should all condemn these acts and, and work towards building and consolidating our democracy. Mm. Thank you so much for those reflections. Uh, just a quick one. Ghana's party shows great form for club. Of course, he uh, left the Ghana camp uh, when we were playing with, I believe it was Brazil, and uh, he had an injury, but he was in fine form for Arsenal, netting that brilliant uh, goal. They beat uh, Tottenham Spurs uh, by three goals to one. Of course, we'll bring you more news on that. Liverpool drew with Brighton. They shared three goals apiece. Fulham lost uh, one to four to Newcastle. Uh, and uh, Chelsea just pipped, you know, got a shade ahead of Crystal Palace. And my own Manchester United lost by Mapito. Guess what? Six goals to three or three goals to six. Look, um, Manchester City is on fire now. Between them and Arsenal, it's a pretty dicey game. But I know my man United will pick up form. What I don't know, and later on the show you can share with me your thoughts, mm -hmm. whether Haaland, Erling Haaland, can continue this form. He is in fine form, he is strong, but like with Fernando Torres in Liverpool back then, one injury and it could be a sad situation. But I wish him well. I mean, he's playing in a... Uh, the, the citizens, the very team that opposes us in Manchester. But you can only wish him well. He's doing very well. Yeah. Let's get into other stories. The big story there, Asantehini alarmed and he bemoans the rate of deforestation. Now, the Santihini Otsu Fosse Tutu II has described as alarming the current rate of deforestation in the country. Estimated at 10 million hectares per year, he said available statistics indicated that Ghana had one of the highest uh, deforestation rates in Africa and the world at 2%. Per annum, on the average, losing about 135,000 hectares of forest per year uh, as of 2020. And we also have ECG vending system improves, but many still can't access power. Let's take a look at that story. 
So some electricity consumers are still complaining of difficulties in buying prepaid power credits in spite of assurances by the electricity company of Ghana ECG that the system has been restored. The ECG said last Saturday that its, prepared customer, it's, that its prepaid customers could now purchase power at third-party vending points and through the use of the mobile phone through its app. That it said followed resolution of challenges that resulted in difficulties in purchasing power. Customers can now purchase electricity credits from their nearest vending points and all ECG district offices. That's according to the ECG statement. We also have prayer camps not solution to breast cancer and that's according to the head of the um, Breast Cancer Awareness Association. Uh, but Mr. Brimer, any thoughts on Asantini being alarmed and bemoaning the rate of deforestation and also the ECG vending system improving, but many still can't access power? I have tried since yesterday to, to uh, buy ECG um, credit. Uh, through the ECG app, which I have always used. And I was trying yesterday because I read that from October 1, it was going to work. Um, unfortunately, it didn't. This morning, I've tried again. Uh, it didn't. I, I think my only luck is that uh, I haven't completely run out of power. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just, I was just trying to do that out of precaution because uh, I don't get updates on... What I, what I still have on my balance, mm. which is something that I ordinarily would have had. So out of precaution, uh, to just try and top up, just in case, you know, um, the power goes up at some point. But since yesterday, I've not been um, lucky with that. I can only hope that, well, it may be isolated incident with me, but otherwise the system has been restored. But it also speaks to the whole question about our digitization process and they need to realize that, look, it's technology and anything can happen. Mm. You know, even, even in the U.S., the advanced societies where technological advancement started, they, they are occasionally these issues. So, yes, it's understandable, but it should also get us to reflect in the way and manner we are going about with our digitization process, where it appears now that almost everything is being centralized. <laughs> And if one day there is a problem, then we would be in a big, big, big trouble. I can only hope that ECG will be able to um, sort out the issue so that people can have uh, access to um, the service. But I think Otun um, point is something that we continue to lament on. I believe that in the area of preserving our, the future of this country, uh, the government certainly has failed in the fight against Galante. There's no doubt about that, because what is happening cannot be termed as a success. I mean, absolutely, there's a failure. Travel across the country, and you see the water bodies, the state of our water bodies. Forest reserves are being totally you know, destroyed by Galante activities. Um, other areas are completely being destroyed. And certainly, this cannot be an evidence of a successful fight against Galante. It is a complete failure. And so uh, it is either the president act by ensuring that heavy, you know, either sanctioning those that he's put in charge at the various regions and districts, or he himself then maybe say, well, I put my presidency on the line in the, for the fight against Galante. I acknowledge that things have not gone the way they should go, and therefore um, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the right decision by if it is handing over or quitting the job. Um, I think we need to be serious as a country because this is our future. This is the future of Ghana that is completely being destroyed. And we can't keep talking about, oh, one day we'll import water. One day we'll import water. And then we keep going like that. Till so when would we um, act? It's a total failure. And we must say it as such and stop this whole thing about, oh, Galamse fight. We are going to fight Galamse robustly. How many times should we hear that? So Otufo is right in being quite um, <laughs> speaking out of desperation, speaking out of frustration. Uh, if I were him, uh, I think my, my situation would be the same. Mm. We can't blame chiefs. We can't blame, you know, that is why the laws are there. That is why the police is there. That is why the judiciary is there, to prosecute offenders. Right. So if people are not being prosecuted, how do we keep complaining? 
Uh, and, and Mapito, uh, just a quick thought on, on the ECG scenario. We've heard, you know, bits about how supposedly the glitch may have been a hack mm -hmm. and all of that and how it could have been internal. I mean, there have been allegations thrown around about a cabal that could be in, involved in all of this, siphoning money. I feel whatever it is, we cannot confirm. All we want is that it should be dealt with yeah. so that ordinary folk don't have to go through the, the pain. Because I was mentioning the other day, look, there are people who operate coal stores, uh, major businesses. Mm -hmm. If they don't have generators, for example, and this happens, how do you expect them to power their facilities? Even if they have to do so, it would mean immediate um, cost that they, they, they weren't prepared for. And looking at the economic situation, this wouldn't help anybody. And a quick one on the breast cancer bit. I, I think I'll just, you know, it talks about how people should, yes, uh, go to hospital when you suspect anything of the sort and going for, and instead of going to pastors to pray for you i think just balance it it's like that arab proverb trust in god but tie your camel so go and let them pray for you and everything but go to a hospital facility get yourself checked take the the required medication undergo chemotherapy whatever it is if if surgery is needed do that and don't just say, oh, we're going to pray over it. God knows, and he gave us science. He gave us doctors. So don't die an unnecessary death. I just wanted to reiterate that. Sometimes some people feel if you do this, it means you don't believe in God. You know, when you go to hospital and all of that, it doesn't mean that. Other stories? Uh, no, no, no other stories. Let's go to the Daily Guide. Let's quickly do so. We're building thriving tourism economy, Akufuado says so. That story on page three of the Daily Guide newspaper. And in fact... Uh, the president has stated that the government wants to use tourism as, as an effective tool for economic transformation mm -hmm. in a move to create jobs and prosperity for Ghanaians. He disclosed that the government intended to use the next 18 months to exploit the country's culture, heritage, history, as well as the hospitality and beautiful national scenery, natural scenery to attract tourists, fun lovers and leisure seekers who are hoping to find a unique experience in Africa. Of course, there's been talk about the global citizens uh, show yeah. the festival which was also facilitated by uh, government and we've had the year of return uh, the year beyond the year of return we've also had that situation where there's been talk about creating an institution you know for to train people in tourism mm -hmm. uh, so you would say well quite a bit of commitment um, are we seeing that on the ground you Suleimana certainly tourism is uh a major area to focus on uh, mm -hmm. for our development. Other countries are doing it, and certainly we can also do it. So it is quite um, um, heartwarming to hear the president talk about the fact that it's an area that is going to be prioritized. Um, but again, it, it brings us back to the whole issue how can you be talking about promoting tourism when your environment is being destroyed? Mm -hmm. Tourism, to a large extent, is really about the environment. Mm. I, I don't think that people will leave Europe or the Americas just to come and um, look at how beautiful your hotels are. They have far more superior hotels there. I don't yeah. think they would want to come here to look at your infrastructure, your roads, or your buildings because they have far more um, superior roads and buildings over there. If they would come here, it's predominantly about uh, our coastline, our environment, our game reserves, of course our people, and how right. clean our environment is. And so, um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it, it cannot be that we want to promote tourism at a time when our environment is being destroyed. And so, if indeed there is that commitment to promote tourism, there must be a commensurate you know, a commitment to promoting our environment. And that, for me, is the beginning. We need the prerequisite for promoting tourism is a great environment. And so we would look forward to uh, more action, more realistic commitment to promoting our environment, because that's the only way we can eventually promote tourism. Let's wrap with uh, these stories. So a few more headlines. GRA rolls out EVAT invoice. There is, we killed four Say Mankasim killers. I'm sure you followed that story uh, where uh, a pastor and a chief uh, took away the life of a 22-year-old. It's, 
emerged now that they have actually killed four people. And, and this was just the, the latest one that we got wind of. And thankf <coughs> thankfully, they've been nabbed. Baumia extols Adokufo. I'm talking about the vice president uh, extolling the former defense minister. Of course, he is now the chancellor of the Kumasi Technical University. And there's also Don't Reject Our Cocoa Coffee upon Kumasi. So I saw a tweet on this. Uh, over the weekend. So let me just get into that. Minister for Information, Kodjo Pongkroma, has called on the European Union to work with African, Caribbean, and Pacific countries to prevent its proposed ethical and sustainable supply chain rules from becoming a burden for the local cocoa and coffee industry. According to Mr. Pongkroma, though the new legislation is a way to drive better practices within the cocoa and coffee subsector, more importantly, the EU must work with ACP countries in achieving these sustainability standards. Else, it risks putting players within the value chain out of business. He quotes here, at a time where farmlands are coming under threat for competing and more rewarding economic activities, sustainability is a matter that requires more attention. By no means, however, should sustainability be used as a pretext to limit market accessibility. Exchange of best practices and technical assistance is necessary so that we can have a win-win situation in all of this. Part of the problem, as some people have pointed out, has to do, again, with Galamse and what it is doing to our water bodies, which we will use for farming, what it's doing to the land itself in terms of mercury and other contamination in there. And people are saying this is even watering down the quality of Ghana's cocoa, which we are known for worldwide, and that it could be part of the problem in terms of the quality we put on the international market. Your take? Well, uh... I, I read a tweet um, of the minister as well and some pictures posted from some engagement. In S Suleymana, your, your voice is a bit muffled right now. Can you hear me? Better. Okay, so I was making the point that I, I read the tweet and I saw uh, pictures of the minister's engagement uh, in Brussels. In fact, I, I, <clears throat> I spotted him uh, at the Brussels airport uh, last Wednesday and I was asking myself, oh, what, what could be happening here in relation to media staff and press freedom staff and so on and so forth. But we couldn't get to, to speak because he was quite a distance um, away from me. Uh, but later when I saw that, I said, oh, okay, our Minister for Information is getting onto something related to trade business and all of that. And uh, I've, always, I've always had some, uh, I don't know what, how to put it, but some uh, sort of feelings that maybe one day our, our fantastic Minister for Information will end up being uh, our trade minister. So it's great to, to have Kojo uh, beginning to talk matters of trade and all of that. But like you said, it still comes down to the environment. And uh, it's a question of ethical production of these um, produce. Uh, I don't think it's a, a question of they saying that we would at some point not need cocoa or coffee from these countries about how ethical we are producing these things, issues of child labor, issues of the environment and all of that. So I believe we should up our game, again, on the environment to ensure that uh, we are in compliance with these measures that have been adopted to ensure that the right things are done the right way. Let's get into some more stories. Okie doke. There's also the Daily Statesman, Yana Lords Baumia for Religious Harmony Drive. Then there is President Okufuado honest pledge to Haruna Eseku. That story on page three. Oponkroma makes case for Ghana's cocoa and coffee industry, like we have just mentioned. <coughs> then tourism for economic transformation. $10 million hospital, hospitality training school in the offing, like I mentioned a short while ago. Um, we have just about a minute, Suleimana. I would like you to wrap on two issues. SIM card re-registration. Uh, we've been told that, uh, I mean, people have not had their lines blocked and all of that yet, but we've been told it's only a matter of time. When? We don't know. Your quick take on that. And maybe on Katie Hammond's uh, thinking that young bearded people uh, who may have been booing at the president are coconut heads, and we practically know nothing about administering this country. Quick reflections on these two matters, and it's a wrap. Well, you see, there, there, there are some people that I, la I love to listen to um, because I, I, get, I get entertained quite often when I listen to them. I, I, I end up laughing. And increasingly, Mr. Katie, Honorable Katie Hammond is becoming uh, one of them. So that is my comment on it. When I listened to him, I, I, I had a good laugh. Um, so that is what I would say about that. 
uh, on the SIM card registration, we knew it was not going to work. Uh, but the minister, as usual, in a dictatorial way, wanted to say, look, I would do it, you know. Um, I'm looking forward to what he will say now, what she will say now, uh, whether this time around she's again going to reluctantly um, extend the, the deadline. But certainly you can't block people's uh, SIM card when it is not their fault, when they haven't right. had their Ghana card, when you have made Ghana card mandatory for registration. And I don't have it, out of no fault of mine. How do you then punish me for something that is not my fault? So, I mean, we should, we should not act as if without a SIM card, everybody having their SIM registered and linked to the Ghana card, Ghana is going to end by December. The most important things are there. We should deal with those ones rather than these easy-to-do uh, ways of punishing ordinary Ghanaian citizens who are already suffering uh, uh, under, under our current economic um, challenges. So let us continue to judge or let us continue to dialogue. We want to have the best for our country. It is good that people register for all, all you know, the things that one can think about, but it must be done in a humane manner. It must be done in a way that indicates that we are not in a in an autocratic regime, as the minister sometimes um, wants us to feel. Mm. So, uh, yes, people should pursue their Ghana card so that at the end of the day they will be able to register. Uh, but, but then, just just 30 seconds. Sorry, I, I this. You know that some people have filed a court case uh, against the NCA and the ministry over this SIM card registration, and I think last week I read that they had gone to withdraw their case. And they withdrew it on the basis that Ghana, uh, the NIA had indicated that, look, these people had actually applied for the cards and their cards are ready. Some of them have not collected it, and so they withdrew. But what amazed me was the fact that it was an application from the NIA, NCA to the NIA for the data around the applicant. And then, ultimately, you could then have the data of these people released and actually published in the media. Mm. including their date of birth, you know, um, their surname, their last names, and, and all that. And then I ask myself, is that how our data is going to be treated? So that the NCA lawyer can simply write to the NIA and say, oh, I need the data of Ben and uh, his colleagues, you know, Suleimana, and, this, and then it is provided. I don't think that we are safe if this okay. is how our data is going to be treated. Okay. And we need to engage the NIA on that. All right. Suleimana, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Always thank refreshing, you, and we wish you the best of the week. Have a great week. Mapito, it's been fab. It's been awesome. But I'll be out and about in Kanishi mm -hmm. uh, shortly, and we'll be having that very um, crucial interaction. Can't wait for that. More coming, but up next, we serve you sports. Do you stay. Welcome back on Drive Safe with me, Benjamin Akakbo, and I am back at Top Tech Transport and Logistics. It's all about our safety as we hit the roads daily, whether as pedestrians, but mainly as motorists, people driving, using uh, the road. Uh, today, our focus is going to be on speed. Speed. This is a monster of, of a, a situation, speed. It's killing a lot of people. So what should we know about speed limits, limiters, I'm talking about tachographs and the rest, and the other dynamics. But before we get into it with Mr. Cecil Gabra, so you think you know, check out this road sign. What do you think it is? Check out the possible answers. All right, so you've taken a look. What do you think it is? 
uh, we will give you the answer at the end of today's segment. But without further ado, hello, Mr. Gabra. Hi, Ben. What's your secret? <laughs> you always, uh, I've known you for a long time, but you are ever, ever green, I should say. So you, you remain younger and younger. What is your secret? Well, the secret is I don't hide my age, so it controls me. Less food in the evening, and that is it. Everything in moderation. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and in fact, speeding too must be done in moderation. In moderation. <laughs> too much speeding will kill you. Let's get into the matter of speed from the limits, the limiters, and other ideas when it comes to speed. Right, if you look at road crashes itself in this country, 90% of it is caused by the human error. 5% is caused by the engineering of the roads and 5% is, is caused by um, the mechanics of the vehicle. Okay, that is it. So 90% so on account of the person behind the steering. Precisely, human is, factors. Right. Human factors. Now when you break it down, you come to human factors about 80% to 85% of the human factors is all speed. Mm. And that is it. So the faster you go, the much more difficult it is for you to stop the vehicle. And the faster you go, the harder you hit. So control your speed. In our country, we have speed limits. One uh, 50 kilometers in town, that's when you're driving, in right. the urban areas, wherever it is. Mm -hmm. You are restricted when you get to hospitals. At hospitals, you don't even hung. There are so many rules there. Um, playground areas, schools, you reduce your speed to right. 20, 30. Mm. Right. So on the highway, it's, it's uh, a different thing altogether. That's 80, um, 90 kilometers per hour. It used to be 80 and it was adjusted to 90 kilometers per hour. So on the motorway, for example? On the motorway, it is different, 100 kilometers per hour. But now, do we even have a motorway? The motorway is destroyed. Mm. So, and maybe I'm sure one of the days we have to do um, a whole program on the motorway to talk about what is it's really happening. Mm. So if we are driving, um, the most important thing is that you do not drive beyond your speed limits. Mm. But how many people drive above their speed limits? I will say almost everybody, because if you look at the speed at which people drive, you ask yourself, is it really possible, is it relevant? Most people within town, mm -hmm. in the urban areas, mm -hmm. if you look critically, you would see that most people are doing 60, 70, Precisely. not 50. Precisely. So it's not possible to stay at the 50. It's a fact. So we need to talk about it. I feel it's time for the country, to uh, the lawmakers, to look at um, what, in terms, what, what in terms we have in speed. Because you travel to the best countries with the good road safety practices, such as Denmark, Netherlands, you, ho you have the speed changing at certain times. That are at this time, um, you can travel at about... 80, 90 kilometers per hour. But here we have one speed, like in town, 50 kilometers. We are traveling 80. So we need to look at the dynamics. We need and to make look the at the dynam changes. dynamics. Well, um, if you speak to the engineers, they'll tell you it's because of the width of the road, the right. size of the road, right. and, and so on. But then we still need to look at the dynamics of um, having the speed limits. Okay. However, the biggest um, issue, which is my greatest concern, is the issue of fixing speed limiters in commercial vehicles because they carry a lot of passengers and therefore if there's any issue at all we'll have more deaths. If so you remember talking about the public transport, the major ones plying major routes. Precisely. If you if you remember the biggest accident uh, uh, that claimed a lot of lives in this country, which was I think ninety two and uh, was caused by a metro mass bus, that brings that idea that look less fish speed limiters because the f the fastest that you will go will come with the hardest hit let's put it that way right so by law if you look at the li 2180 again it states categorically that certain vehicles which are more than three tons must have speed limiters in them and what are these speed limiters right it is um it is um i'll say should I say a gadget or should I say um, 
it's a notch which is fixed under the accelerator and it is calibrated mm -hmm. that when you keep on driving and accelerating it gets to a point in time that 80 kilometers it will not go again and this is why it cuts, I, off, automatically. It cuts off and then you, you can only drive at a speed of 80 kilometers and that is why the safest um, bus to use at the moment i'm not campaigning for them it's stc mm. as and they have uh, fixed the, the they've have, they have calibrated the speed limiter and it's 80 kilometers now apart from the law is saying that you should have a tachograph what is a tachograph a tachograph is also an equipment fixed in the vehicle that determines a lot of issues for instance the behavior of the driver whether he's, he's jittering and uh, oh, wow. yes the speed limit of 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 the vehicle the distance at which the driver has driven let's say from accra to cape coast mm. right so no rest no break precisely with a taco taco graph you just have to pull the information and everything is printed there okay so that's also what aspect then the law is saying that carry a log book to indicate where you started from and then i mean what time and then the mileage and so on that alone will be a deterrent to reduce the speed where we can be able to save lives and save the property uh, which is the vehicle but for now speed is a big issue is uh, not in natural fact it's the biggest issue when it comes to human behavior you can see a car traveling at a speed of 160 kilometers per hour but what goes into it your ties your vehicle itself, and I'm sure we'll be doing ties very soon, and you notice that even at, at car ties... if anything crosses you, the, the result can only be one. Yes, and that is why in driving we have the thinking distance, we have the um, stopping distance and the braking distance, we have the calculation for it. And that will not work when you're driving more than 100 kilometers per hour. However, we have also noticed that those who drive early, and who, those who drive more than um, 80 kilometers per hour, those who speed die very early, okay? Because, I mean... Um, the impact and everything, so they die on the spot. Not, even, not even in an accident, but because of their behavior, which means that they are always oh, overworking their body, their heart is beating more than the, uh, the, the normal heart beats, mm. you know? Such a person, when he, he gets to his destination, he gets to the loo to, um, you know, and get out the waste because he's doing th certain things which is, is not allowed for a human being. So um, our advice is that reduce your speed, arrive right. alive in one piece and not in pieces. Speed kills, let us kill speed as soon as possible. Thank you very much uh, for today's segment, uh, Mr. Gabra. And you've heard it, speed kills. Kill your speed and stay alive. Drive safe, stay alive but right before we wrap on today's segment so you think you know here's the answer to our quiz question for today and that's how we wrap it up with uh, drive safe with me benjamin akaku thank you for watching Welcome back to the AIM show. What you just watched was an excerpt of Destruction for Gold. And that's a hotline documentary by Erastus Asaridonka, who joins me in studio. Erastus, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. Okay, so we have some interesting stuff on the table uh, that we'll discuss or we'll get into very shortly. But let's talk about Destruction for Gold. Mm. So um, we, as multimedia, uh, decided to go back. Mm -hmm. uh, into history, uh, government started a fight. Successive governments have gone into various interventions mm -hmm. and we needed to, as the fourth estate of the realm, uh, go back, do a total recall mm -hmm. and check whether 
uh, what the interventions have achieved, the mm. impact. And so we started right from Ashanti region. Mm -hmm. We've gone to so many regions. We've checked the various rivers. Mm -hmm. uh, we've checked the forest reserves. Mm -hmm. And this is what we have so far. And that is what we're going to present in the three part um, uh, series of this documentary. Okay. So the first part will be airing uh, this evening. Uh, that's at 8.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. And it is going to show, it will go back into history, look at the interventions made, and then show a bit of the Tano River sure. as we speak, mm -hmm. the state of it, who is polluting it at this moment. That is what you'll be seeing uh, this evening. But in front of me... Yeah, let's talk about that. We collected samples of every river and stream that we visited. Mm -hmm. And that is what we have packaged for you to see how they look like okay. as we speak. Mm -hmm. So the first one here, this is River Ancobra, uh, uh, as we speak now. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, the River Offing. Mm -hmm. In fact, we fetched uh, this one, uh, the stream Afuafu. The Afuafu stream is at uh, Sehujabo, so there is a town called Mafia, mm. where they are doing illegal mining. The stream has been so polluted, we had to pick a sample, and this is how it looks like. And if you look at how deep it is, the pollution, yeah. and even as we fetch samples of it, the Afuofu stream, there's a Amoya stream, they are all in the same area. Okay. After I stored it for a while, you could see the metal, uh, this original bottle, mm -hmm. you see some metal content depositing in the bottle over there. This is the River Bunsa. Mm. The River Bunsa is at uh, uh, Takwa, they're close to Takwa. Okay. That's where we fetched this one from. Mm. Um, this is uh, the stream Totua. Totua is after Asankregua. And on our way there, we saw some two men mining. And you see that in the documentary. Mm. And they told us, point blank, we don't have the permit. We, we just want to make some money. And they polluted the stream so bad that we wanted to pick a sample and show you uh, how it looks like. Uh, this one is Nguyen. The river Nguyen is uh, in Dompim, inside mm. the uh, Patahong forest. And that one is also redirected. You will not even be able to identify is coarse. Mm. This one you see here is the Tano River. And we fetched this from Atala, the villages of Atala, Uhiyam Penika and Datano. Mm -hmm. That's where we fetched the samples from. This one is River Bia. You know the Bia uh, joins um, other great uh, rivers. Mm -hmm. and we fetched this one from Sefi Jaboso. There is a town called Mafia. And of course this is the Amoya mm. stream, which joins the Bia at a certain point. So if you see the color of this, at a point when it gets into this, this is the lighter version mm. of this one. And I think it's also important to uh, compare with uh, this bottle of water we just bought. Yeah, so this yeah. is clean, normal water. Yeah. And so you can just look at the difference. And so this is the state of our rivers yeah. as we have them today due to illegal mining and I think um, if anybody is seeing this and if you are uh, in authority and you are fighting this if you are a military person and you are also fighting this mm. and you see this if this is how we want to keep our water sources then it's up to us then it's up to us let's talk about um, this you mentioned the military men or people who are trying to fight uh, Galam say on the ground I, I want you to give us a picture of reality on the ground because you mentioned that one of the miners told you a uh, point blank that we don't have a license we're just trying to get money yeah right yeah um and i know like last week or two weeks ago we had some military officers on the ground trying to you know um, take control over the situation did you see any military men did you see any people trying to uh, fight this um well, so we, 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 on our trail, we did not see any military men. Mm -hmm. um, in many of these areas that we went, um, we were told that members of Operation Halt have been around. Okay. The reason why they did not go there, because let me take uh, the Tano River, for example. Mm. When you get to Ohiyam Penika, even before you move through Samurai Boy into these areas, 
is an <coughs> area that is so visible. Where these things are being done, there are people there, there are local authorities there, there are chiefs there. Mm. They will tell you that we have filed complaints upon complaints upon complaints. Mm. As to whether those complaints at the local level get to uh, where they should get, why the tax force or the various agencies have not been going there, that's, that's, that's a mystery. Mm. Um, when you find out that in some cases they've been there, mm but they fail to go to certain key sites. Sometimes you see that they even bypassed a particular mining site and went to a different site to burn excavators. And, and so that selective justice is what baffles my mind. Yeah. And it gives a sense that perhaps um, this whole thing is being done selectively mm. towards certain people. If you also look at the uh, Tano Nimri Forest Reserve, <coughs> where we did extensive work there showing the devastation to the forest reserve mm. and you ask yourself why has the various security agencies ignored warnings from local authorities the local people who have written letters to certain quarters why have they not entered to stop this particular person yeah. you saw the release that came from the last ministry that this person uh, contact mining mm -hmm. does not have the permit to go and mine in the forest reserve. Mm. Why have we waited for him to destroy uh, about 12 football fields of that forest reserve before we go in? Even now, we are asking the Forestry Commission mm -hmm. uh, to uh, prevent him from entering the forest. Have we gone back to see whether in fact they have done that? Is he still mining in the forest reserve? I, I think these are pertinent questions that we should be asking. Now let's talk about the people living in these various communities. What are they saying? Obviously, some are part of uh, this menace. And so, but what are the people on the sidelines saying, living in the community? So I'll tell you about um, the, uh, we went to an area mm -hmm. where the people, in fact, let me talk about the Fufu stream, mm. this one, uh, from the mafia community before you enter, at the entrance of the community, the whole, almost the whole town is mining. There are Chinese people in there who mm. are the supervisors. And the uh, chief of the area, I'm told, is involved. Mm -hmm. The assembly member went around with us. He said he doesn't like it, but he cannot stop it. The youth, they are all in there. So, wh sorry, when he says he cannot stop it, why, why can't, can't he stop it? If your uh, chief mm -hmm. is mining and he tells me that the chief, district chief executive is aware. Mm. So if they are not stopping it, who? What kind of power does he have as an assembly member to stop this? The police are aware of this. Mm -hmm. They are not coming in to stop it. So he doesn't have the power uh, to stop it. In, in certain areas, for example, uh, when we went to uh, the Traboom uh, forest, mm -hmm. we were pointed to certain key people in government who own certain sites. But I'm not mentioning names because in some areas, I don't have the evidence. Sure. Though they will tell you, sure. you don't have the evidence linking these people yeah. to the sites. But yeah. that's what they tell you, that this site belongs to so-so and so, this site belongs to so-so and so. And the so-so and so being Minister A, Minister B. Minister A, Minister mm -hmm. B, Military Man A, Military, uh, military Man B, mm -hmm. uh, Policeman A, Policewoman mm -hmm. B, Chief and in some A, Chief A, Chief B. Uh, Chief B. Mm. It cuts across. I was able to mention in the case of the Tano River, mm. Akunta Mining Limited, and which belongs to uh, Bernard and Chibosiakon, who is the regional chairman of the MPP, mm -hmm. because we have evidence. In fact, we have drone footage. And when this evening you get to watch and you see the, where the mining sites uh, are mm -hmm. and the extent of pollution, the link between <coughs> these mining sites and the river tunnel, mm -hmm. in some cases, sitting directly in the river, that one I can boldly tell you that I know that that is irresponsible mining. And it contributes, uh, uh, I'm quoting uh, the board chair of the Minerals Commission, this is illegal mining. So these people who own these mines, <clears throat> are they aware of the destruction and what these, uh, this illegal mining is doing to the environment? In fact, some of them will tell me in the face, boldly, that we won't stop this. 
there is no job in the system. So this is what we will do. Mm. When you watch the documentary, you hear some of the youth tell you, illegal mining is what we are going to do if the president is not giving us any jobs. This is what we are going to do. Mind you, on our trail, mm -hmm. we found that those who are able to enter mm -hmm. forest reserves, mm. those who are able to mine directly in uh, water sources are the most powerful people we have. I see. And you can trace some of these to the powerful men in society. Sure. Because when you get to the ground, you see that the, the ones who are afraid and, in fact, do not have the uh, political muscle mm. or the, the power, so to speak, to back them, to do what they are doing, they are afraid to enter the forest reserves. They are afraid to mine in the uh, 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 river bodies. Mm. Except in some few instances where you find that the use of the champagne mm -hmm. and where they have security guards watching out for people and the moment you approach, they get into the water and swim away. On the often we saw those things. Mm -hmm. So many of these emboldened illegal miners mm. in the forest are linked to powerful people who support them. And until we are able to bring those to order, yeah. then this, this, this will continue. And obviously, you talk about you know people in power, high in high places, mm. who are controlling all of this. So, would you say that because you've seen what's happening on the ground, you've spoken to people on the ground, would you say that the fight against Galamse is just PR? It's a mirage. I see. So, if you know what a mirage is, um, on the road, on a hot afternoon, mm -hmm. you, you could see a semblance of water on the road mm -hmm. ahead of you. Mm -hmm. And as you approach, you, you see that there's nothing there. Mm. It's a mirage. Sometimes you find that the same people who are fighting mm -hmm. the war on the ground have links to mining sites. OK. And, and so it's laughable. When you get to the field and you find out that, okay, this side belongs to so-so and so, mm -hmm. but this same person has been on TV talking about fighting illegal mining. Yeah. You get to the site and you realize that this person sent military men uh, uh, to uh, this forest uh, to protect the miner there, mm -hmm. and he's at the helm of affairs fighting illegal mining. It's laughable. Yeah. And that is a reality of the fight that we, we seek to fight. And I think that if the president wants to really fight this, then he must start from his own administration. I see. Start killing the bugs from his own administration and then it will trickle down yeah. and send a strong signal down to the ordinary person mm. in the forest there that once I've dealt with my own people, I'm going to deal with you. All right, now let's talk about some military men we saw on the screens. Uh, what was happening there? Are they there to fight uh, Galamse or they're just posing as... I so that, that was last year. Okay. That was last year. And I, I've seen a statement from the uh, Ghana Armed Forces inquiring about why we're showing uh, that uh, video. In fact, mm -hmm. that was last year where we went with a task force to flash out people who were in the Odahon uh, Forest. Okay. The Odahon Forest is part of the Apamprama Forest Reserve mm. in Manso Tuntukrum in the Ashanti region. And we found over 35 fully armed mm -hmm. men mm. stationed there protecting this miner as he mines. After our expose, in fact, we, our team, were kept in the forest for five hours okay. by these men. Because? Um, they said they are not allowing us to go. One, they searched our pockets, they searched us, took away, uh, cleared our phones of any image that we had about that encounter in the forest. I see. They told us point blank mm. that they were not allowing that footage to go out. I see. But somehow, uh, through God's grace, we were able uh, to bring that uh, expose out. Mm. After the expose, they sent men, uh, military intelligence uh, people, uh, to interview me at the office. Mm -hmm. They sent some of their big guys from Accra, to come over to interview me, get other uh, evidence that they needed. Okay. They said they were investigating. Well, uh, the Ghana Armed Forces is yet to come up with the findings, the results of the uh, findings of that. And when was this? 
Um, the questions that we ask is that who sent those military men into the forest? Who is coordinating that? Certainly over 35 armed uh, military will not mm -hmm. just go into uh, a forest on their own. Somebody yeah. will send them. For what purpose were they there? I think those things should come out clearly uh, for everybody to see. So that, that, that was what you saw mm -hmm. in that part. And it's, it's a total recall. Uh, you'll be seeing more of that in the documentary this evening, the first part of it. So I understand uh, the military man that is on our screens right now, uh, the one who was on his phone, he was talking to his boss. Can you tell us about that conversation? Yes, um, when we went in there that day, um, we, uh, the team arrested Chinese, the Chinese over there. You know, by law, the Chinese are not allowed to even go into mining. Yeah. So that's an illegality in the first place. Mm -hmm. they, they arrested them. They took hold of the entire uh, area. Mm. And then uh, this man you see making a call mm -hmm. was the first to enter the yard. Uh, that military officer entered the yard and asked us why we were invading the uh, premises. Mm -hmm. And then he started making calls. The name of the person he was calling is in the recording that okay. we do have. And then he told him that we have come there together with some policemen. So within a couple of, uh, just about 15 minutes, then vehicle after vehicle full mm -hmm. of armed military men mm -hmm. kept storming the area, <laughs> as you can see in the video. This one will come and then military men will get out. Mm -hmm. This one will come and then they will get out. A lot of people, and they were not happy that we were going into their tents. We found uh, some of their um, uh, Uniform. paraphernalia, uniforms, uh -huh, uh -huh. guns mm -hmm. in the wooden sheds within that particular mining site in the forest. And Which so, shows that they stay there. Yeah, they stay there. Okay. And they were not happy that we were getting, getting into those things. Mm. And then within a short time, uh, about an hour, a lot of military men, I could count over 35 of them, fully armed. And over 35 of these military men, mm. and it's just you, your cameraman, and who? Yeah, me, my camera technician, and a driver. Okay. And, then, and you are not armed, obviously. No, we, we, we weren't. Yeah. But the team that we were with were armed. Okay. And the they were sent force. by the environment minister okay. at the time. Okay. And we, we were disarmed, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, my uh, driver got beaten. Okay. Yes. And our vehicle's uh, windscreen was smashed. Okay. Including the mirrors. Mm -hmm. The camera was also broken. Uh -huh. And... Um, we were kept in there for five hours until finally we made calls to the Ghana Armed Forces up there, calls upon calls upon calls before finally they asked us to leave. Even before then, they said they should strip us. So they searched us because they still believe that we still have some, uh, some of the things with us, uh, the, the recordings with us. But our leader was bold enough. He told them that, well, nobody's searching anybody, stripping anybody. If you want to kill us, you, you better kill us right now or we will leave. So we just left. So they threatened your life? Yes. Threatened the life of your camera technician, they threatened yes. the life of the driver? In fact, the commander came to me, mm -hmm. whispered in my ears and told me that you are trying to be bold. I see. And I've told you to stop filming. This time, if my gun should go off and you die, you have died for nothing. And nobody will celebrate you. And those words will forever ring in my ears. So please, please repeat those words. And this is from the commander. Yes. Okay. What exactly did the commander say? He said, you are filming. I've told you to stop. Mm -hmm. You're not stopping. If my gun should go off right now, mm -hmm. you're going to die. And nobody will celebrate you. I see. So talking about the production of the documentary, how difficult was it? Obviously, you experienced some challenges, threats on your life. Uh, what else? Can you take us through that production process? So these rivers and streams uh, flow through the nook and cranny of Ghana. Mm -hmm. We've uh, traveled long distances, mm. sometimes uh, deep into the forest, about 70 kilometers into the forest. Mm -hmm. There's no network, nothing. And we had nothing. We were not armed. There was difficulty. I remember at, at that tunnel, we approached the mining site 
which is sitting directly in the Tamil River. Mm -hmm. And we saw at the gate that they've designed the gate with bullet shells. I see. Over hundreds of them indicating they've written there that no entry. I see. And as we tried to enter, two men holding pump action guns mm -hmm. uh, came towards us and they told us that we cannot enter, we cannot approach, we should move back. I try to, you know, sometimes I try to engage them. So mm -hmm. I, I try to engage them. I told them that we are uh, media men mm -hmm. and we want to film what they are doing there. Mm -hmm. We want to know whether they are doing responsible mining. Mm -hmm. If they have any documents or other things they should show us. Yeah. He just told us that we cannot do media work where they are. We should just turn around and move. Which obviously means that they are doing something illegal. Yeah, so we had to turn around, but then we went a few meters away, flew the drone, mm -hmm. and captured what they were doing there. And all that you will see uh, in the part two mm -hmm. and three of the documentary. But today, the first part will focus on the total recall. Mm -hmm. We'll get to see the interventions mm -hmm. on the ground, and then we'll see a bit of the, the Tunnel River mm. and who is polluting it today. And so uh, I'll ask you to make a date and watch that. Before I let you go, officials, what are, what are the officials saying? Well, officials as in government. As in government, as in um, lands and resource minister, as in someone who is saying that they're fighting uh, this menace, someone who puts his pre uh, presidency, I beg your pardon, on the line. What, what, what are they saying? Well, they are not telling us anything. I have personally sent some of these footages that we do have constantly. I send them to the deputy minister, mm -hmm. Kuduka, and uh, the minister himself. Okay. Even yesterday, I sent uh, some of the videos. Mm. In fact, as we speak, and we are speaking about illegal mining, there are areas that people are going into fresh water sources mm. and starting mining in those water sources. And I get those videos a lot. Mm. Yesterday, I got one from the stream, Ajaka, mm -hmm. in the Aowin uh, uh, district. Um, I informed the DCE, as we speak, they've built some fans, they've put it, and if you see how beautiful that water source is, mm. and they are going to start, they started yesterday, they are going to start destroying the water source as we speak. I sent those images to the minister himself, yeah. And the uh, MC for that area, I got no response. I see. So I don't know whether he has acknowledged receiving it and what action he's going to take. And it's been like that. Mm. Um, you don't get any response from them when you, you call. At least we are stakeholders in this fight. Mm. And I'm expecting that at least they will link up mm -hmm. with us if really they want to fight. Mind. If really they want to fight. Okay, Rasta Sasari Donko, for the last time, take us through these samples and what we have here. Okay, so um, this one is the river and Cobra. Mm -hmm. This is how it looks like when we picked it uh, from uh, its source, mm -hmm. uh, River Ofin, mm -hmm. and we picked this one from Beposo. Okay, Beposo so in the Achuman mm -hmm. uh, district. Uh, this is the uh, Afuafu, Afuafu stream. Mm -hmm. The Afuafu stream is in Mafia, mm -hmm. a small community in the Sefi, Jaboso district, mm -hmm. and it joins the Bia River. Okay. Uh, this one is the River Bonsa mm -hmm. in the western region. Mm -hmm. This one is uh, the Totua stream mm -hmm. after Asankregua, close to Samreboy. Mm -hmm. This one is the River Nui. Nye is in the Patahum mm. forest uh, at Dompim. Mm. Dompim is the hometown of the deputy minister uh, for lands in charge of mining, Mrekuduka. Uh, Tano River, mm. this is the Tano River. We picked it from Atala. Mm. And this one is the River Bia. The River Bia. Mm. And this is the Amuya mm. uh, stream, which together with the Fuafu stream, joins the Bia River. River. Okay, quickly, I just want you to explain something to me. The darker the color means they've been doing it for a long time, or? No. Mm -hmm. The darker the color means it's so polluted. Mm -hmm. So polluted. And sometimes the streams are the ones that are so polluted. 
And as they join the major rivers, you could see that it gets lighter. So this one, mm -hmm. the uh, Afuofu stream, yeah. joins the river Bia. Okay. So you could see that when you compare the two, mm -hmm. this one is lighter, this one is uh, deep. Yeah. It means that when it joins it, it becomes, uh, you know. Okay, okay, it becomes the, lighter because... Yeah. The destruction so, hasn't been... Yes, and it means that the intense. destruction itself, the illegal mine itself is happening here. I see. Okay, now that makes so sense. So now yeah. sometimes it happens here. And okay. sometimes too, when you look at the Tunnel River, yeah. it's darker because uh -huh. the pollution is happening right there in the uh, river. Ah, okay, okay. All the okay. places you see in the documentary that they are sitting directly in the river yeah. and they are mining. I see. Erastus Asari Donko, thank you so much for the good work done. And we hope that uh, the officials will actually do something and not just uh, continue to say that they will do um, something. Make sure that you catch the first part of the three-part documentary tonight at 8.30 p.m. on the Joy News channel, also on DSTV channel 41 and Go TV channel 144. For you still watching the AM show, we'll be back after this. Welcome back. Now let's go to Kaneshi, where some Ghanaians are complaining of police brutality meted out to them on Sunday. According to them, one police officer assaulted them. Benjamin Akapo is on the grounds to speak to them. Benjamin, can you tell us what you have gotten so far? I am here at Kaneshi Bishop. Yes, uh, Mapito, so... I am actually here at Kaneshi Bishop, others would say Bubuashi uh, Bishop, but it has to do with an incident that transpired yesterday after church where a police officer discharged a bullet, attempting actually to hit the leg of one of those affected. Let's cross over and have an interaction with them, with the victim, Michael, and some witnesses. Come with me. So here we are, we're approaching the spot where this actually took place. And this is the scene of the action. As you can see here, this is the bullet hole, the pockmark, if you like, that was left after the incident. And you see what it's done to even a tarred road and what it could have done to a human leg. But let's have an interaction now with the person in the middle of all of this. Uh, Michael is here with us. We'll call him Kofi uh, for the sake of this uh, bit. So we'll, we'll not focus the camera on him, but uh, do tell us. Uh, we're just giving you the name Mike. What exactly happened yesterday? Okay, so um, yesterday was... On my way from church, I was heading to our sister church just across the road here. So this intersection, anytime you want to get to this side, you have to cross this intersection. So I was with a friend. Whilst crossing this intersection, we saw a motor rider. He, he was a policeman, an inspector, of course. So he was also heading towards the main lane. So when he got closer to us, my friend crossed. He crossed the road, leaving me at the other side. So... The, 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 the motor rider just went. So whilst passing, he started insulting us. The, the friend, motor rider who is a police officer. Yeah, the police officer, that's the uh, inspector. He, he started insulting us, saying, So we confronted him, my friend, confronted him and told him, ah, why is he insulting us? What, what have we done wrong? All of a sudden, he just uh, stepped out of the motor, he came closer to us. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, was we haven't done anything. So we told him we haven't done anything to him. So he doesn't have any rights to touch us. And I told him he's an officer of the law, so he should behave as such. He he just 
got pissed off, pulled a trigger by his side, and then shot just close to my leg. So, so he pulled a side pistol. Yes, he pulled a side pistol. A side firearm. So, a side firearm. Yeah, that's what that's what he he pulled. So he pulled that, and I I was, I mean, he just pointed straight to my leg. So I had to jump back. Okay, so so let's hold it right there. As the action is going on, where is he standing? Where is he coming? Because the 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 the, the shot is here. So give us an idea. Where is he standing? How does he approach you people? Where are you standing and what happens? So he, he stood here. This is where the police uh, man stood. And this is where the police man stood. This is where he stood. And then I was standing just right where the, the man in the yellow shirt was. Mm -hmm. And we had that interaction. So he just took off the pistol and then just shot just close to my leg. So I had to move a step back. Mm -hmm. So after that, he slapped me. He slapped you? Yes, he slapped me. He slapped me on, on, on my right cheek. He slapped me. And later on told me, whatever I want to do, I should do. That is his name. So I should do whatever I want to do. He sat on his moto and then just sped off. T tell me, so, so your leg was actually somewhere around here, where I'm standing now? My leg was here. here and he's also standing here. Right. And was he aiming to shoot your leg? He aimed directly to my leg. He aimed directly. He just clocked. After clocking, immediately he just gave the shot. He clocked and immediately gave the shot. And that is the, 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 the shot, the, the impact of the yes. shot that we can see yes. right now. Yes, that is the impact of the shot. So, so tell me, after when all of this happened, mm. how did it make you feel? I was really traumatized. I was really traumatized. Uh, we didn't know what to do, so we quickly had to go to the Kaneshi police station and report the incident there. So that is what, what, what did the police officers tell you? Okay, so the police officers took our statements. Two of the officers came to us here to the scene. They also took their pictures. They also contacted some two, three eyewitnesses to hear their side of the story. And they told us to go back to the police station. They gave me a, a hospital chit to send to the hospital. And I'm supposed to report to the police station this morning. Okay, so you've not been to hospital yet? No. I'm now going to the hospital then from there to the police station. All right. It, it also happens that this police officer, you got to see his name. Yes. What, what was the name? The name is Che Pepra. Che Pepra. Che Pepra. Pepra. That, that is the name there, Che Pepra. And you suspect he was an inspector? An inspector. With the rank he was having, the rope, a white rope, you could say he's an inspector. Okay. And... You took shots of the motorbike, the license plate of the motorbike he was riding, right? That. Yes, I did that. I took a shot of the motorbike while he was on it, while he decided to move. Hmm. I took a shot of it, hmm. uh, the motorbike, and he himself, I did that. Hmm. Uh, le let me also interact with two more people. In fact, there are a number of them we'll be interacting with. But this gentleman was also right here. In fact, he was right by the side of the person we've decided to call Mike or Kofi. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, would you like to tell us your name? Uh, I'm Emmanuel. Okay. How long have you lived in this neighborhood? For so many years. Uh, this is where I was born. Okay. What happened yesterday? You were right here. Yeah. Tell us what happened. Yesterday, I was coming from my house. I was going to somewhere, Adori, and I don't know what is going on. I saw them quarreling, so I, I asked the policeman to stop what he's doing. I said, I'm begging him to stop what he's doing. The moment I opened my mouth, I said, Papa, stop, 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 turn on. He just fired. Then he just fired. I was begging him. I don't know what has happened. But the, the way they are, uh, uh, friend, they are, they are shouting and they are uh, coming out, to, they are throwing words, and the policeman is doing more than them. The way the policeman is talking, and I don't like the way he's coming out. And I said, Papa, I beg you, because now he wanted to arrest them. So I said, no, I have to beg, because I, I was rushing to first light. My people are waiting for me, I'm going to Michelle Camp. Yeah. So when I saw what is going on, I said, no, I won't go, I have to beg. So that the policeman will leave them. Eh? I started begging when the policeman get annoyed. 
All of a sudden, I was standing there and I jumped. He also jumped. So both of you, you together I with... and he also jumped. And we are three. The other man, where is the other man? We are three. We are three standing, and there is another man standing. Uh, uh, is I, I think that is uh, Alfred. Okay. And he was also there, and he, he want to uh, 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 react. So I pull him. They don't go. Maybe he will do uh, something that you maybe he can uh, not do. All of a sudden, he, uh, he went and sit, sat on the motor and leave. Okay. So we can continue this in English, or if you want to speak uh, Cree or something, you can. English. You can. But 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 the fact is. How did you feel at that time? Because basically, I was traumatized. I'm telling you, I was sad. Since uh, out to date, I was, I was, I, I can't do anything because I haven't seen something before. All of a sudden, the policeman standing in front of you, you haven't done anything wrong. All of a sudden, shooting. And I think uh, if you maybe there's a problem, uh, one shot, you have to raise a uh, gun up. Why do you? Uh, 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 we don't do that. You shoot the uh, uh, gun uh, down. Why? It's my problem. So what, what what happened after he, he fired? What happened after that? Uh, the gentleman we spoke to says he slapped him. He slapped him. He slapped the man. And I don't know, you were not here. If you see how he slapped the man, the man uh, was going to fall. If he want, he want to fall. Because how he slapped him, the man don't know that he's going to slap him. So the man want to react. So the, the other guy said, and I call him, Papa, don't go. So the, the, the motor was here. Yeah, we have parked the motor here. Then there's a lady uh, coming and he called him. Now I don't know what happened and they leave. There is a lady uh, who is sitting on the uh, uh, car and he, he called him and he said, Why do you not? Like, and then, and then he leave. This is what has happened. And uh, Papa, if you, are, if you are here, I don't know, the people are run, so all, of, all of them run away. Hold for me. Let me let me speak to another person for good reason. We'll not show his face, but this person, after the police officer had fired the shot, the remnants, the shell casing, uh, they they got to pick that up. Hello. Good morning. Morning. Yeah. For purposes of this conversation, we'll call him Yao. Yao. Morning. Yeah. Morning. Say. Hey you. In the end, right? They ne see ya. They poti ne see ya. I'll be to me a catch you. And now this year, you say, a boy around 12 something. Now my co baby, I'm so meba. To me, Bano, then, me who say, and I eat too near, but many madam for near. And to your Bano, you eat, me ever the moon say, police, you know, across the crime, and two guys. To your mobile, I say, agreement be no more year. To argue true argument, no more year, no. Now, police in the car and say, I didn't quite near Odiana. Then Adam on to was saying that. Na kwa na nya media kra me ba kra to bo ma me na mesu mi ntwe mu e so as sa de na e koso na den mi hu se police ni ka se ya de munim obi a modwen se mun kwa na gana nya modia nti mi hu an se o twi to na e woni na o pa so nti mi su mi jina be bi o shutu en be bi a mi jina en ni ma ni jina en no en wa bi a mi jina en chen wa na mi jina na asem ni si so that's what they are mean no nti e wi ye no wuti mi hu bullet no ne ho no na wo fire enya sa me na me fa bullet na me de ma nipa no me na wo fa bullet eh me na me fa bullet ni ma nipa no eh enti no wo hu no wo hipote aha ya eh na da wo se ho no shoot you na ko fum etutu ko enti me na me fa na me de ma nipa no ojina o nipa na anko ye shoot no eh na me fa na me de ma no eh enti no bi atese later on no police officer no e buy ebe fa anche bia no san ba back ebe fa eh nia epete ye no bi no ego ho no e ampa oda one day i was in here so i didn't know anything about it mm. by what i just witnessed that's what i pick and i give it to the other man here yeah, that's all yeah all right thank you thank you very much so according to this citizen that we're going to call yao he was here and then after the police officer had fired and moved you know a distance away he picked the pellets and in fact one of the gentlemen we spoke to mentioned that because it struck the asphalt it it sort of spread out you could call it a ricochet so some of it even hit him the gentleman i was speaking to a short while ago in yellow but they picked the pellets and they gave it to the person we are referring to as kofi and that was taken to the Kaneshi 
police station. There are other witnesses that we are going to interact with. Let's quickly do so on this very sad scene uh, here in Kaneshi. So, first of all, I'd, I'd like to find out from you. Uh, you mentioned that when the bullet hit the ground, it split out it split and out. part of it hit you. Yeah. Tell us about that. I was shocked all of a sudden. When he, he shoot the bullet, no, all of a sudden then hit me. So I jump. And I haven't seen some before. And out to date, I don't know. If you look, if you look at the place, look at you see the particles there. Mm. Look at the ground. You see the particles over there. Mm. That is what happened. I don't know what to say again because this is what happened yesterday. And you say in all the years that you've lived here, you've never seen anything like that this. thing before in my life. In time of my life, I haven't seen some before. A policeman in my life, I haven't seen some before. Eh? I went to the high school in Ghana, Ghana National College, Cape Coast. So I know, I haven't seen some before. I haven't seen some before. I'm telling you. Thank you. Let's, let's interact with, uh, and, and, and what the gentleman was saying, the one in green, basically already just re-echoing. Uh, the story that we've been told so far. He says he came, met the scene before he could uh, say, Jack, that shot had been fired. But of course, he just picked uh, the shell casing of the bullet. We also have someone else who was here yesterday. In fact, he was walking together with the person we've decided to call uh, Kofi. You can turn, we'll not show his face. We'll not show his face. We'll just have a side interaction with. Um, him. So for purposes of this conversation, we are going to call him Kwame. For purposes of this conversation. Kwame, good morning. Good morning. So you were walking with Kofi yesterday when this happened. Uh, narrate to us what exactly happened. So um, we've closed from church. We're walking towards this way. We had, went, we had gone around to eat something here. So when we got here, he was coming towards this side. So you got to this point? We got to this point. And you were point. crossing? We were crossing. So when we saw him coming, I mean, in fact, no car was coming. He was the only person coming. So when he was approaching, I quickly crossed. So my friend waited for him to cross. So when he crossed, and he, he bypassed him. So he said, why are you insulting us? He said, what can you do? Immediately, he, he packed the bike. And then he said, what would you do? And we said, you can't do us anything. What, what sort of life is that? He attacked us. Hey, keep quiet. So my friend, we said, you can't do anything to us. You can't do anything to us. What did we do? Immediately, he, he came in front of him. He moved the uh, pistol and gave a shot. And my friend took, uh, uh, brought back his leg. If he had not brought it back his leg, he would have shot his leg. I thought... So, so do you think the police officer was aiming for your friend's leg? That was what we saw because he didn't even relent. He immediately gave the shot. So then after giving the uh, shot, he gave him a, a hard slap. The slap was too much. So I felt my friend was even um, hurt. So we went back. In fact, I became very scared. Since yesterday, I've, I've never slept. I, I've had sleepless nights. I don't know what to do to myself. So I beg you, we want justice. What this guy did, I mean, the police service, they have to, I mean, investigate this issue very well because we never thought this could happen to us. And if it had happened, I mean, I don't know where I, 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 I will be. I don't know whether I'm to take my friend to the hospital or because my friend looks like, ah, what did we do? Empty road. There wasn't any traffic. So you could have bypassed us. Well, you had a bike. Bypassed us and go. Why did you have to just come out? Everybody was here. I, I said we could attack him. We can't attack him. We are too. Mm. And uh, the way it happened, people started coming around. So he felt maybe, uh, the, but because of the shot, people too went back. Everybody went back. So we didn't do anything. And we said, no, we have to go and lodge an official complaint at the station. That is all. Thank you uh, for giving us this account. So we continue. We'll be wrapping up shortly, but I just want to have a few more interactions and then I'll wrap with the victim. Uh, excuse me, sir. Good morning. Right. So this person here too was a witness. Uh, um, I was coming, so I saw the policeman. The policeman was pointing gun at the man this thing face. So as they are, they are challenging some words, so the policeman used the anger 
and shoot the gun in the this thing. But the policeman don't have any right to do such thing. You understand? Police meant to secure the citizens. You understand? So I don't even though this guy do anything, he don't have any right to pull out the gun. He don't have any right at all to pull the gun out. So in fact, what that happened yesterday, what that happened yesterday, I'm very, very disappointed in, in that man. That type of person is not good to, to be a policeman because something can happen, he will use anger, you understand, and kill somebody. You understand? That type of person is not good to, if not that, if not God, eh, that man could have shot this guy. Because the way he's talking that yesterday, he even slapped the guy with the, that anger that is in him. You understand? So if not God, it's God that make him to put the, the, the gun in the, in the ground. You understand? So that type of person, if don't take time, that type of person can kill human being at any time. Mm. Somebody can provoke him, he can easily kill human being. You understand? So, so, so just to wrap, uh, you're Nigerian, right? Yeah. You live in this community? Yes, yes, I live in What, what do you do here? Me, I, I do my business at Kasua side. Okay. Uh, so this is what happened yesterday. Mm. Uh, Thank you. I was I was very I was very disappointed in that in that, that particular policeman because that thing Ghana police I haven't seen Ghana police they don't do that type of thing I haven't seen some before but that that one came and spoiled everything. Thank you so much for interacting with us. We are grateful for your time. I'll just wrap the conversation with what uh, the person affected wants uh, to see moving forward. So Kofi, that's the name we've given you. You've reported the matter now to the police. This morning, you are reporting at the Kanishi Police Station, yes, right? Yes, please. I'm reporting at Kanishi Police Station. What What do you want to see? How How will justice be served for you? Okay, I I, I really want justice to be served um, because um, the policeman, since he knows much better about the law, shouldn't have taken the laws into his own hands to do what he did. So I want justice to be served so that it will serve as a deterrent to other officers too. All right. And so we've been having this interaction at Kaneshi Bishop. They call it Bishop because of the school that is uh, very close to us. And right at the scene, you will still see that pock mark, that shell mark left by the bullet, fired by police officer Che Pepra. And you can even find some particles right here, right here. And he is suspected to be an inspector of the Ghana Police Service. The matter has been lodged, uh, the complaint has been lodged at the Kaneshi Police Station. And today, the gentleman in question, the, the main victim, is reporting at the police uh, station. The only hope for them is that justice will be served on this police officer called Che Pepra, whose motorbike's license plate number we have. A shot of it was taken. Again, it was mentioned that they smelled alcohol on this police officer, that in fact he reeked of alcohol. So he possibly could have been under the influence. But we'll leave that to the legal system uh, to determine what the outcome will be. Mapito CBD from out here in Kaneshi, Bishop Benjamin Akakbo for Joy News. And we're back here in the studio where the electricity company of Ghana ECG says it has fixed the vending challenges preventing customers from accessing credit through their prepaid metering system across the country. Now, this is after some customers had difficulties purchasing power last week. External communications manager at the electricity company of Ghana, Charles Ni Aiku Aiku, spoke on the probe last night. You know, as a company, or just like um, other companies, um, there are challenges with systems. Systems can go down due to uh, the fact that it could not respond. It could be internet connectivity. It could be the fact that um, we, we need to update service and all of that. So it is not an issue of um, something that happened. You know, we always have uh, monitoring systems for our, uh, our database systems and our service, yes. So we picked that up uh, that Tuesday night and we, we, we've tried to resolve and just picked up gradually and we've made that significant progress. Okay, is it not the case of some form of sabotage? 
you're saying your system was not hacked? I don't have that information. I don't have that information. And as I said in my previous conversation with um, your radio, I, I informed them that for every um, system, when there are issues, you do system audit. And that is what we, we are doing now, trying to make sure that we audit the system to make sure to understand what happened. And I'm sure at the end of the day, we will we'll come to a conclusion. But for now, uh, efforts and concentration is to make sure that we get our systems up and running. And the system audits that you've conducted so far, what was the preliminary findings as to what exactly could have happened? Because I'm not sure you've experienced this uh, before since you started um, or since you started or you introduced this prepaid system that we are using. Have you experienced anything like this before? No, no. And so it was unexpected. Mm -hmm. It was unexpected. And I'm saying that even with uh, preliminary um, auditing that we've done, uh, we, we uh, realized that the systems were not responding. We also um, got um, some information that um, especially by third party vendors that they, need, they were not having connection through the VPN. Yes. So we were able to detect some of them and then we resolved it. Yes. Mm. And as I indicated, I mean, as we progress with our uh, system audit, we'll be able to come out uh, clearly. Yes. Has your system become vulnerable? Our systems are not vulnerable. Our systems are not vulnerable. Yes, our systems are not vulnerable. Was it a ransomware attack? As I indicated earlier, I don't have any information about that. I don't have any information about that. So as we continue with our system audit, uh, whatever is uh, realized. I mean, I've heard all kinds of um, post on social media and all kind of yes, but I don't have that information, so I cannot uh, speak to, to that. So you've seen a post by the ranking member, uh, he's the deputy ranking member on the communications committee, Ningo Pram Pram MP, Sam George. Um, he posted something uh, today on social media, or is it over the weekend? I don't know if you've seen that particular post that uh, Mr. Sam George posted. And amongst others, he raises concerns about some internal cabal that did this at the IT department of your company. You're saying you're unaware of that. Amongst others, they are siphoning some 200 million CDs a month. So that's the post on our screens. And if you permit me, I'll read exactly what he says. He says, the challenges with the ECG are extremely serious. The attack on their system was not external, but carried out by a cabal of criminals within the very same organization. The government must, as a matter of agency, commence a forensic investigation of the IT department of ECG. My information points to a group that has been siphoning over 200 million CDs a month. Yes, you read that right. What we are witnessing is internal power play to cripple the new MD who has dared to open an investigation into these matters. The state security apparatus must, with alacrity, take this matter up and ensure the safety and protection of the MD and his team seeking to uncover the mess. The rot at ECG will make you sick if you truly love this country, and it is not about politicians here. It is Ghanaian citizens taking advantage of the citizens. We demand swift and immediate action. So that's uh, the post by Mr. Sam George um, over the weekend on his Facebook page. Um, you're saying nothing of that sort is happening? Well, I, I, I saw that post. Um, it was shared As, as I sit here, as I'm speaking to you now, I don't have any information regarding what uh, the Honorable Member posted. I don't have any information on that. None of your IT team or the members in your IT department are being investigated by Yoko and the National Security? Okay, so currently, um, what we must also understand is that ECG is a public institution. Right, and whenever there are challenges, our stakeholders are involved in the in the conversation. Um, PRC is involved. 
national uh, security is involved, um, CSOs are involved, and in fact, all our students are involved. So um, the fact that PRC involved doesn't mean that um, PRC is, 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 is going to um, reduce or increase. I mean, I hope that's what I mean. So all of these stakeholders are involved, right? And as I sit here, as I speak to you, of, there's always auditing of systems when there are issues, which is usual of every IT institution. So when these issues or this auditing are done or is done, then we can discuss that further. On, on so you talk time. about the various um, stakeholders, for instance, that you see are involved. You've mentioned PRC. I have mentioned Yoko. What really is the role of Yoko in all this? Um, I don't have the, what I can say for now is, is the fact that um, PRC, we've had with PRC, we've had with the national security based on the fact that these um, issues faced by our customers could generate into something else. So we need to get us involved to uh, reinforce or enforce its security uh, nationwide, yes. But I don't have any information regarding activities of Yoko or Nasriti. Any, I've said earlier, when we are through with the editing of our systems, and we have any proof that is being done by any member, internal or externally, we have policies, we have laws. Those laws and policies will apply. John's question, uh, which talks about the losses, uh, if you've been able to put any amounts to it in terms of what you have lost over the period for your inability to serve your customers, do we know? Um, currently, no. No, no uh, information about that. And how come, I'll how come, Mr. Ayuku, whenever. How come, Mr. Ayuku, that you do not know how much you've lost <laughs> over the period? Um, we, we are concentrating and focusing more on restoring the system. We are conducting uh, the auditing of our systems too. So can you bear with us? Um, at the appropriate time, this um, information would come out. Yes, but on a day, on a normal day, Mr. Aiko, this is a business that you're running and uh, you, you are in charge of this. Coming into this program tonight, you know that such questions will come up because people need to know. You owe the people some explanation. So they're asking how much revenue you may have lost. Averagely, you ought to be able to tell us. Yes, I, I, I understand that we, we, we as a company owe our customers a lot of answers. I agree. But I would also want you to bear with us that as we conduct the auditing, as we conduct investigations into everything that we are doing on our systems and all, we'll also be working on figures. So I wouldn't want to give any, any figures now which will change tomorrow or change the next minute. So I asked for an average, estimated. What does I'm it look like? I, I, I can't. I cannot give any, any estimates now. That's external communications manager at the electricity company of Ghana, Charles Ni Aiko, who was speaking to MFA Apo on the probe last night. But we want to know if you've been able to purchase prepaid credits yet. So share with us on our social media pages on Facebook and Twitter. We are drawing news on TV. We do know that ECG vending systems have been uh, improved, but many still can't access power. Are you one of those people? Well, do share your uh, reactions and your thoughts on our Facebook page. But now it's my favorite time of the year where we talk about the National Science and Maths Quiz. Let's find out what this year's event looks like. I'm not 
um, a maths or science genius and that's what I was telling my guests in studio now but uh, maybe they can try and encourage me and it's never too late like they always say and joining me for this conversation is Nanekuya Ankumasari who is the managing director of Prime Time Limited and I also have Professor Elsie F. R. Kaufman who is the national science and maths quiz Quiz mistress. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. How are you guys? Well. You're good. Thank you. All right. So, like I was, we're having the conversation that I'm not a math or science. I, I just, I've never liked it. I'm not sure if I might like it in the this year's uh, competition. Would you like to encourage me in some way or another? Yes, definitely. Because you use science and math every day of your life, mm -hmm. even as you are working, you are just uses so much science and math. Mm -hmm. And so I don't see why you can say you don't like it. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm not really convinced, but You're it's okay. We'll, 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 we'll get there. Okay, we'll, we'll, get, there. we'll get there. The microphones we're using, for example. <laughs> the microphones we're using, for example. Yes. Yeah. The or chair even, you're sitting on. Mm -hmm. so, so I'd rather benefit. Let the other people work and, you know, work the science and the math, and I'll just benefit. No, but you're using it yourself. Mm -hmm. For example, in your mind, you have how much time you have for this interview, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're doing calculations all the time yeah. to find out how long you should allow us to talk. Yeah. You see, you're so doing the science and math. I'm doing the science and math. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now let's talk about today's event, which is the launch, launch and the yes. balloting. And it's yes. happening today at 3 p.m. Yes, at the Nut Hall. At the Nut Hall. Tell yes. us what we can expect. Well, um... Interesting surprises. Interesting surprises. Uh, there are a few new things about what we are doing. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was speaking with you earlier about about the the format. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, usually we have all the schools coming into uh, on location, mm. and um, and then we have the competition all in one place. Yeah. But COVID disrupted that. Yeah. We needed to be able to cut down on the number of, of people coming into into camp so that we could better manage the numbers. Mm -hmm. And so we started doing the prelims in the regions. Okay. But this year we are going back to pre-COVID times and mm. doing everything together. We are going back to Kumasi. Okay. And um, we have a, a well, a, 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 a refined and deodorized. I'm borrowing this from from. Uh, from Frito, refined and deodorized <laughs> yeah. signature tune. Yes, our okay. sick tune. Yes, we've uh, localized and Ghanaianized it, if you'd like. So to it, it, it won't be the doom, 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 bum, bum. Well, it, it's, it's, it's basically the same <laughs> tune, but uh, with, with a little Catch Ghanaian it. flavor. And, yes. and why is that? Um, we're evolving constantly. Okay. Con constantly evolving. Mm -hmm. so, um, Yes, mm -hmm. we want it to be a, a, um, a little more like us mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, the sound. Okay. A lot more like, you know, Ghanaian. Ghanaian. Yes. Okay. Uh, in terms of the sound. Now, uh -huh. We also have um, a few schools joining the competition on an invitational basis. Mm -hmm. And these are nine schools that um, did really well. They didn't win their regional contests. Mm -hmm. But they did so well. They 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 call, um, ended their contest with forty points or more. Okay. And we think that at the regionals, we actually recognize the schools that um, win with forty points or better. Okay. By giving them an extra cash award, so uh. we felt that we could do this for for these other schools. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to single out Mankanso. Mm -hmm. S, uh, SHS especially, they really, really impressed us and really they are the catalyst for us deciding to go this way. I see. Them. This I is see. their first time coming to the national and they are coming with 47 points from the regional. Okay. So you can imagine how tough their contest must mm -hmm. have been. We are experimenting with, with the, with the, with the um, scores. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'll leave it at that. Next year, we'll have a different conversation. So, so when you say experimenting, them. what exactly are you doing? You know that um, the, the regional competitions or the regional contests are such that when you win your contest, then you move on to the national. Mm -hmm. We're experimenting with the scores to make it a little more competitive. Mm. So because you, you qualify by just winning your contest, mm. you could have a much tougher contest 
than another school, even in the same region. Okay. And so you, you, you see that the scores uh, uh, are varied. Mm -hmm. uh, we will still protect the regional, the regional um, quota, mm -hmm. but we want to make it a, little, a lot more competitive so that each region comes in with their best mm -hmm. teams. All right. So this, this is the first part of the experiment. This is the first part of the experiment. Yes. Okay, let's talk about the balloting. I understand that there are some schools who've already made it and won't be part of the ballot. Yes. All right, so can you share uh, which schools are those? The, those are the seeded schools, the okay. 27 that got to the quarterfinals of last year's okay. competition. Okay, yes, all right. They are really seeded. All right, uh, Prof, now let's talk about this year and what we can expect. Oh, <laughs> uh, by now you know the National Science and Math Quiz is very competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, we are expecting the usual fireworks mm -hmm. in the contest. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are expecting the usual uh, support from the, <laughs> the schools, <laughs> the old boys and girls. Yeah. Yes. We are expecting a lot of excitement. A lot of excitement. Yes. And from your end, mm -hmm. are you still going to be the tough uh, quiz mistress we know? that tough you see i'm not that scary at all. <laughs> well i mean it's not that you are you know asking me maths and science questions yeah so that's why you're not tough for me yeah uh, uh, well i have to ask the questions i i can't help that yeah. I, that's what i have to do so i'm going to be asking the questions uh yes i have to ensure that everything is done fairly definitely yes definitely so i have to make sure that they are doing the right things yeah i want to take us back to last year quickly and how it was for you, you know, your pros and your cons, some challenges you experienced, and what are you taking to this year's uh, championship? Or, oh, yeah. The good thing about me is when I finish something, I usually don't even remember it. Okay. So I have cleared the plate. <laughs> uh, we are starting afresh. It's a new year. Mm -hmm. It's a new competition. It's a new competition. Uh, yes, I'm not going to remember all those things from last year. We are going straight. But, but, but <laughs> like, so I, I understand that, you know, you clear everything off your plate. But there are some things where you're like, okay, I don't want A, B, and C to happen going oh, forward. It's the usual thing. It's, okay. it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. All the schools have the rules, you know. Mm -hmm. We had a four-page document, which is the rules of the competition. I see. They, they should yeah. read and understand everything in there because that's what I'm going to work with. Yeah. Uh, no need to win at all costs. Mm -hmm. you, you have to, to, to show good character Definitely. and good sports personship. Definitely. Yeah, so that, that is what I'm expecting them to do. All yes. right, ladies, I'm going to ask you to give me just like two minutes as we watch a wrap of last year's <laughs> events. We are organisms whose genetic materials have been altered. Yes, Eden? Genetical, genetically modified organisms. Yes. I was reading the fifth clue. Three points. I am deflected by an inhomogeneous magnetic field which can split an unpolarized beam of me into two beams. I am composed of three spin-half fractional charge particles. In the free state, I decay with a half-life. Eden? A neutron. Yes. case, this is usually at the national level. I involve collection of information from all individuals in a population. Yes, Joel. Population census. You are right. Keta Senior High Technical School has 30 points. Presbyterian Boys Secondary School has 49 points. Trempe College has 53 points. Keta Senior High Technical School, it is not easy to get into the grand finale of the National Science and Math Quiz. You've worked really hard and you've done well.
you are a bronze medalist. Presbyterian Boys Secondary School, congratulations. You are a silver medalist. Well done. Prempe College, congratulations on your win. It is my pleasure to declare you a champions. 2021 NSMQ champions. Congratulations and congratulations once again. We are Cassia, we are Cassia, who do have been Chawan Bona, who do have been Chawan Bona, who do have been Chawan Bona, Yao Khan Waka, Okanamo Khan Waka, I saw what for them, I saw what for them, who they are so up for them. excitement, fireworks, and prayers, and lots and lots of questions. And I want to talk about the questions and how you come up with those questions. Like, what, what's the process of uh, coming up with the questions? All right, so uh, we have four subject consultants. Okay. So one for physics, okay. chemistry, biology, and then mathematics, mm -hmm. one each. Okay. What they do is they spend a lot of time coming up with questions along the syllabus mm. of the uh, WASI. Okay. Well, maybe we may stray a little bit towards the end, but yeah. in the beginning, it's all the WASI syllabus. Yeah. So they sit down, they actually have a plan. They decide which topics they are going to be covering, mm -hmm. and they set the questions. Now, each set of questions have to be about equal strength, because if you are going to ask different schools mm -hmm. and they are competing, you have to make sure they are generally around the same area yeah. and then of approximately equal strength. Strength, yeah. So that means after they have done their work of setting these many questions, we also need to sit down and review as a team. Mm. So there, there are meetings, moderation meetings, where my responsibility there is to listen to each of the questions okay. and to decide whether it's possible to even give scores to these questions, whether they are appropriate for the level okay, that okay. we have reached yeah. uh -huh, mm. and whether they are accurate. Mm. Okay, you know, it's a human thing. All of us, we are, we are human. We make mistakes sometimes. So sometimes we, we notice the mistakes at the moderation meeting Definitely. and we correct them there. Yeah. Then I pick all these questions and I go away and I have to look at every one of them again. So I go over them multiple times, Definitely. making sure that everything is okay. Mm -hmm. And that is how they get uh, selected to be asked. Okay. Yes. My last question to you as the quiz mistress. I mean, the fans are there, the supporters are there, making a noise, they're being rowdy. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you going to keep supporters in check to allow the schools on the stage, you know, to feel less pressure? Because a lot of people say that, okay, because they are all of these supporters, they're making a noise. The pressure gets to the contestants. Yeah. So as a quiz master, a mistress, I beg your pardon, how are you going to make sure that they are not tense? And how are you going to make sure that the supporters are in check and behaving? It's, it's a whole uh, uh, project doing all this. Yeah. Uh, first thing is when I get on stage and the students are there, I talk with them, I try to put them at ease. Mm -hmm. You know, we chat about nothing much but i just try to make them a bit more relaxed something to take their mind off of the stress that is going on mm. but some of them works with some doesn't work with others yeah uh -huh. i also am very conscious of uh, managing the pace at which the thing is going sharp uh -huh. yeah so i'm very very much aware when things are getting stressed i may slow down a bit uh, uh -huh. okay. When I want some excitement, I quicken the pace okay, a bit. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I even sort the questions in a certain way so that it depends the the you know the flow of the mm -hmm. of the of the competition. Yeah. Uh, every once in a while, when I remember and I myself so see, nobody thinks about my stress. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I know. Oh, I also get stressed. Of sometimes. course. So, uh -huh. so, so I will find ways of maybe breaking up the thing. I'll yeah, find something yeah. funny to say. Some, something, you know, yeah. uh, just to relax everybody, everybody a little bit. But I also have to be uh, firm sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, when the crowd is making too much noise. And that, that's a huge concern because 
the, the contestants have to hear the questions mm -hmm. in order to, and they have to have the peace of mind to be able to answer these very difficult questions yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Right. Most times. Mm -hmm. Difficult questions. <laughs> no, most no, times. not all of them. Not all of them. <laughs> Some yeah, of them. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So they need to, they need to have the peace of mind to be able to do that. And if you're making a whole lot of noise, it doesn't help. So I, I also appeal to the, the audience. Right. To relax yes. and yeah. behave. Okay. Yes, yes. From Primetime Unlimited, you said we firstly have a new song. Well, or oh, the song has been, the jingle has been, you know, catcherized. Refined and yeah. jingleized. Yeah, catcherized. Catcherized. I like this. Catcherized. I like that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we're also, you know, doing some experiments in terms of the points. What else, point system, what else can we expect this year? Well, um, good organization we we, we we are always looking out to improve on on our performance mm -hmm. every time uh, this year's competition might be a little shorter and a lot more packed in the sense that um, at the preliminary stage we've for some years now since I think uh, um, 2016 mm -hmm. we've we've been doing uh, two two recording centers. Mm -hmm. And uh, so having two contests going on uh, simultaneously. Mm. This time we have three, so that we move a little more quickly mm. this time. Okay. And uh, so when we start on the 10th with the first preliminary contests, mm -hmm. we'll be done on the 26th with the final. Okay. So, so from that's, the 10th that's to in the also, 26th. Yes. Yeah. So that in itself is also a bit, a bit new and... Uh, yeah. Uh, requires some adjustments on everybody's part. part. Okay, yes. ladies, thank you so much. I look forward to this year's uh, quiz. B before I go, though, uh -huh. can I say thank you to my sponsors? Oh, definitely. Very important. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> I need to say thank you to you two, you know, Joy News and, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, Multimedia. But my first thanks would be to the Ministry of Education and the Ghana Education Service for sponsoring the National Science and Maths Quiz. They are our main sponsors. Mm -hmm. uh, ABSA Bank is a partner sponsor and mm -hmm. we are grateful to them. Um, Goyal, Etel Tigo, uh, um, Prudential Life Insurance, mm -hmm. uh, Ghana. Uh, GMPC is on this year to give scholarships and some support. Okay. Academic City University College, mm -hmm. um, Academic, um, Accra College of Medicine, okay. uh, Dano Milk, mm -hmm. Newmont, giving us some um, prizes. There are some private individuals also giving us some prizes. And um, yes, we're grateful to everybody for, for the support that you give us. YFM, GTP. Mm -hmm. we are, we are uh, can you tell us what the ultimate prize is, the prize is? So um, there are lots of different prizes mm -hmm. going on, but the main prize is, is uh, uh, is a cash prize of, of uh, 30,000 cities going to the school and then the contestants and uh, the teachers get 20,000 cities each. Mm -hmm. um, there are other prizes for grabs. There's the, the ABSA Money Zone. Okay. Uh, where from the quarterfinals to the finals, the scores of the schools are multiplied by a, a stated amount. Mm -hmm. So at the quarterfinals, it's 10 Ghana cities for each uh, point, yeah. uh, 15 at the semi-final and 25 at the finals. finals yeah. So whatever you end up with, it's multiplied by that amount and Absa Bank is going to give it to, to each member of the, of the team mm -hmm. and, and the teacher. So there are different prizes. There's the Etel Tigo uh, Higher Score Award mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the, sc the school that, that uh, wins their contest with the higher scores for the day. Uh, there's the NSMQ Star, which is sponsored by Prudential Life Insurance for, for the school that gets a perfect score of 10 in, in um, the problem of the day. Mm -hmm. There are lots and lots of different Price. prizes. Okay. Newmont is giving a prize to, to um, uh, a girl's school that goes the farthest. Mm -hmm. They also have uh, what they call the Golden Journey. Mm. So uh, a category C school that goes the farthest in the competition. Prime Time itself has two awards for that kind of, of school. Mm -hmm. uh, Dano is also supporting with, you know, there, there, are, lots of, lot. yeah. there are lots and lots okay. of prizes. All right. yes. So make sure that you, you know, stick and stay on the Joy News channel. We'll be bringing you all the updates when it comes to the National Science and Maths quiz, also on our Facebook page. You can also check out the Prime Time Limited Facebook page and Twitter page for all the exciting action. Ladies, once again, thank you so much. 
Thank you. My studio guest, Nana Akuya Ankuma. Sorry, who's the managing director of Prime Time Limited. And I also had Professor LCFR Kaufman, who is the National Science and Maths Quiz, Quiz Mistress. Now, the 2002 class of the Ghana School of Law and Commercial of the 20th anniversary at the bar is hosting a series of activities from 4th October to 16th October 2022. Headlining the activities is a constitutional uh, colloquium on the theme Parliament as a countervailing, a countervailing force for effective governance in Ghana. Challenges, prospects and recommendations which is scheduled for 4th October 2022 at the auditorium of the University of Ghana Law School, Legon at 4.30pm. Immediately after the launch of the anniversary, joining me for this conversation is Dr. Samuel Opoku. Aja Yakwa, member of 2002 Ghana School of Law. Doc, good morning. Thank you so much for your time. Good morning, Masiri, and uh, happy to be on air. All right, now, so tell us what we can expect uh, this year. So, as you rightly said, um, our year group is celebrating 20 years after leaving law school, and um, we intend to mark this milestone by a series of, of activities which um, cut across given to the entire country, given to ourselves, given to our teachers, and as well given to an identified charity. So on the 4th of October, which is exactly 20 years we were enrolled as lawyers, we will launch the activity at the auditorium of our alma mater, the law faculty of the, the, the law faculty of the University of Ghana after which we will have a special constitutional colloquium where we'll be looking at parliament and its role in governance and how it has performed so far. We will then follow that with a health, work and family hangout on Saturday the 8th. And then we will make a donation to the Insom Orthopedic uh, Center the following week, have a, a, a dinner dance a dinner dance and an appreciation night for our teachers on Saturday the 8th of October. And then on Sunday the 16th, we will have a Thanksgiving and memorial service where we will remember our mates who have joined our, our maker since we left school. In a nutshell, that is um, how we intend to mark our 20th anniversary. It will be gracing the occasion. So for the special constitutional uh, I mean, colloquium, we have three panelists, the Honorable Minority Leader, <coughs> who, who is a mate, uh, is part of the class, the Honorable Deputy Attorney General, um, Alfred, Alfred Chia Yeboah, and the private legal practitioner, Mrs. Victoria Bath, will be the three panelists for the constitutional colloquium. And we will have Mr. Yabwedua Yeboah for as the moderator, all these four actors are members of our class. Mm. We've invited I mean, people from <coughs> the bar. Uh -huh. we've, invited, we've invited colleagues from the bar, mm. from academia, civil society, um, from the bench and from the executive. We've also invited students from the Ghana School of Law, the University of Ghana uh, mm. School of Law, the Gimpa Law Faculty, as well as the University of Professional Studies Law Faculty. All right. Now, anybody who, who's, um, who can attend this event? It's open to the public. Okay. Joy FM has been, has been kind enough to broadcast it live as well mm -hmm. on uh, Joy News, as well as on, on Facebook and YouTube. Mm -hmm. There's also a Zoom link that we have publicized. But the entire, the entire country is welcome. We believe that this is an important issue we are seeking to discuss. We believe it will, co it will contribute to our constitutional democracy mm -hmm. and development. We plan to develop a policy paper and a publication out of this particular event mm -hmm. and use that to advocate and, and engage with various actors in the governance space of our country. Doc, before I let you go, any last thoughts? I think uh, we want to thank um, our partners and our sponsors. As I said, Joy FM, the multimedia group, has been kind enough to partner us as a media partner. Good Evening Ghana has also done the same thing. 
the law schools or law faculties of, of GIMPA, UPSA, and Legon have also been kind to be partners. And we have a few individuals who have also I mean, agreed and are supporting us in this anniversary. So we thank everybody and we believe that we are contributing our quota to make our country a better place. And for those who want to join via Zoom, where can we get the link? I mean, to be, it's been already shared, but we will share it again with um, multimedia so that you can put it up on your, on your social media platforms. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Dr. Samuel Opoku Ajayakwa, who's the member of 2002 Ghana School of Law, talking about the event which starts tomorrow. Now, the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority is pointing to inadequate personnel for its inability to fully patrol the many unapproved routes along Ghana's borders. Joy News' visit to Elubo in the western region revealed a difficult terrain to patrol, especially at night, as some of the unapproved routes, as well as of land filled with thickets and farms, were just a narrow path used by some of the smugglers. But customers say, customs say it can fully eradicate the practice if it's adequately resourced. Maxwell Aguba has more. Okay. What's your name? Uh, I'm ARO Fifi Blankson. ARO Fifi Blankson? Yes. Okay, and you are? Um, I'm with the preventive unit. It is late night here at Cookoville. A cloud of darkness hangs over the area with no source of light. The moon and trees have cast unnerving shadows in this mini forest. The only light I see here are the intermittent flashes of torchlights from security personnel on the Ivory Coast side of the border. It is one of the many unapproved routes along Ghana's western border. The Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority has been compelled to deploy some of its inadequate personnel to patrol these unapproved routes 24 hours every day. Here, I've met two of them in the dark. It is pitch dark um, with no source of illumination here uh, at the Ghana side of the um, Ilubo border across um, the river tunnel, which is here, is the Nuwe community. I'm told that this is one of the um, unapproved routes um, to Ghana, that is specifically to Ilubo. I have some officers um, here who are making sure um, that persons, unauthorized persons, do not get access um, to Ghana using this unapproved route. And they're going to be staying here throughout the night, and this is their work. I must admit that it's a very uncomfortable terrain, and I'm wondering how they are able to do it. Let me find out from them. Hi. Hi. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Welcome. Thank you. So how difficult is it, you know, um, manning this this side of the border, this side of the unapproved route. As you can see, it's very di difficult. Being yeah. just the two of us, we have to cut patrol along this unapproved route. And this is not the only place. Mm. We have the Kokoanda, which the, the track is very long. It goes far to that end. Okay. So intermittently, whilst we are here, we take our motorbike, then we go to the other side, we just, just go and patrol and see if two activities going on then. Mm. Then we come back. So we'll be here till the next morning, just the two of us. And okay. it's very dark here. Mosquitoes. Yeah all insect like which is not favorable for us but since we are well trained officers yeah. we are able to endure all this all this hazard and we, we do our work diligently okay so i've been speaking to the head of preventive um at the customs division of the ghana revenue authority a lubo um collection point aru fifi blankson he has been telling me about the challenges um manning this unapproved route here um at Elubo. This is um, one of the unapproved routes okay, into so this is an Elubo. Unapproved yes, route it's an, Elubo. We, we call this place Cocoville. Okay. And it's one of the unapproved routes that we have along the border, the stretch of the border. Yeah. Aside the main border, um, people coming through this point. And okay. we have our men that are stationed here to ensure yeah. that they, they protect our, our borders okay. from, from smuggling and also from, from, from um, other illegal activities. Okay. Whether being it um, um, people that are not supposed to come in, or goods that are not supposed to come in, or are supposed mm. to go out of the country, yeah. so that is why we have our men here. And okay. as you can see, it is it is late, but they are still here doing their work. Wow. So I mean, it's it's quite challenging, but that is that is why we are we are we are trained, and that is what we are trained for. 
and mm. so in as much as we have all these challenges yeah. we still we still we still do what we have to do as part of these challenges mm. and i and i see these canoes there yeah uh, are they for patrols for your personnel no or? these these are not for our personnel these are canoes that ferry people across to the other side that is the ivorian side okay. you know um the, the two towns are close to the extent that we have people that live here that have their farms at the other side, okay. have their families at the other side, have their businesses at the other side. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, before? Yes, we've had, we've had a lot of we've had a lot of resistance. Okay. You know, once you are preventing somebody from um, uh, performing his normal duty. Definitely, there will be some form of resistance, yeah. and the economy here largely thrives on uh, these activities. Yeah. You know, the, the the economy here largely depends on the economy at the other side. The same way, their economy also depends on our economy to a large extent. Okay. And so, therefore, for our officers preventing them from bringing in these goods, mm. definitely you expect some agitation. The last one, there was an incident where. The, the youth in the community gathered up, marched to uh, junior barracks, wanting to, you know, break into the barracks to attack the officers there, because they had arrested some goods that were supposed to be for one of their members. Mm. And so, for challenges, we've had challenges, we've had challenges. But um, as, as trained professionals, we are able to, to you know, manage the situation so that it doesn't escalate to, mm. to, to, to. Uh, a different level. Okay. So finally, what would you see as some of the challenges, you know, managing this unapproved route? <laughs> the challenges, well, if I, if I say the challenges, they are enormous, but mm. you, can, you can tell for yourself. Yeah. You can see we don't have, for example, we don't have a structure here where in case it is raining, our officers will, 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 will take shed. We don't have, there's no lighting system here. Yeah. And so somebody and can be here. Is that the across? It is. So you get to the end. That is the nature of this part of the border. Okay. There is no lightning. There's, there's, there's nothing. It is just as dark as you can see. Yeah. And so our officers have to make do with the little lighting that they have. Yeah. You know. And imagine when there's no light, when it's light off. Yeah. The nature of this place, how it looks like. Yeah. And this, this, this part of the Onapur route is even nice. If we are to go deeper, you would see how terrible some of the terrain are. Wow. You'll be going through trees, you'll be going through cocoa farms, how muddy the place is and all that. Mm. And our men are there working 24-7. Wow. If you had an opportunity to speak to um, the, the powers that be, what kind of assistance would you go for? <laughs> we need a lot of assistance. You know, um, we live, in, we live in, an, in, in a technological age. So I believe if we deploy technology mm. with the work that we are doing, we will be able to achieve a lot of results. Okay. And so, um, for instance, if we have, if we have drone technology, mm. you know, we, would, we can be sitting somewhere and be monitoring the activities or whatever that goes on along the border. Okay. And so it is easy to deploy men to a particular point to take action than when you have the people just going round but by the time you move to a particular point, mm. they might have used a different area. Yeah. And you see, this place is vast. Mm. And so once you begin to mount checks at a particular point, they, they, they continue to create other ones. Yeah. And that is, that, is, that, is, that, is, that is a worry. Okay. And so for me, I would say that, yes, we will need to, to, to look at how to deploy technology mm. in, the, in the work that we are doing, especially for patrols. Okay. And then also we need to also, if it's possible, increase the number of personnel that we have mm. so that we can, we can beef up the men that we have at these unapproved routes. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, too. Thank you, too. We are at another entry point, you know, um, to uh, Ghana. The same challenges that we um, were told about at the Lubo collection point exist here also at this um, collection point at half um, a snake. I've been speaking um, to the officer in charge of general duties, CRO Dan Mania, and he says that inadequate personnel and the many unapproved routes here are hampering their work. He says with the needed logistical support, 
the customs division of the Ghana Revenue Authority will be able to do more and generate more revenue for the country. Actually, this forms part of the jurisdiction of the co uh, collection, okay. the Elubu collection. Uh, and then these are the approved routes that, uh, the approved stations that, our stations that we have here yeah. are the uh, New Town, mm. Jewi Waf and Aland Alanda Waf okay. over there. So Jewi Waf, as we are currently standing, mm. is in the middle of the two of them. Okay. And access to Ivory Coast is by this uh, lagoon, which flows from the, what? The Tano, mm. the, the main Tano River, yeah. which is the demarcation point of between Ghana and then Ivory Coast. Okay, we'll okay. be coming more to uh, yeah. that, but one yeah. final the, 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 the challenges. The challenges. Yeah. You have many unapproved routes here. So too? many un unapproved routes. Okay. In fact, they, they number up to five different unapproved routes, and they are um, basically yeah. um, they are they are they are the Kasuasu Kasuazo. Yeah. Uh, Apollon Mu, mm. no, 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 then Adus, Adus, Azu, and then Kable, Kable, no, Zo. Okay. Those are um, the unapproved routes that we find here. Mm. Uh, we've, we've, we've made attempts to set up offices in all of them, okay. particularly at the Ap Apollon, mm. which takes care of this. Thing. Now, the, the major challenge here is accessibility to those approved routes. Okay. They are not accessible by, by, by road. Okay. Mm, by road. So what actually happens is that we depend on a canoe okay. to do our patrols. So uh, and the, the panu, customs division, you depend on, you a, depend on can canoes. Canoes, yes. Okay. And the canoe for now is nothing to write home about. Okay. It's in a very dilapidated listen. Okay. Now, so initially... Wait, I want us to see yeah. the canoe that you use yes. you know, um, for, your, for, for your patrol, yes. right? Yeah. So this is the canoe? This is the canoe. Which this, one? This is the canoe. This one? Yes. So this, this is what you use for your patrols? Exactly. This okay. is currently the canoe that we use, and it's nothing to write home about for now. Okay. Uh, we have uh, uh, this modern speedboat that initially was uh, 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 the, the, the used for effective patrols uh, within the, this, the waters. Okay. Now, uh, see the state in which it is. It's been abandoned. And then now we have to resort to a canoe like this, which is yes, which is also equally uh, in a very bad state. Okay. Literally, officers go on the uh, on the on the on the on the on the lagoon with this, and it's it's like a suicide mission. Mm. And think we think that is a major issue with it. We need to uh, find ways and means of mm. giving getting a better replacement. Okay. A more effective and modern, you know, at least equipment for. Mm patrols on the on the waters okay. yeah now apart from that the two other the two other uh, stations are bedeviled with water problems okay. i mean we all see that the 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 canoe river and then the canoe uh, what do you call it the 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 the, 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 the lagoon yeah. are all polluted okay they're all polluted and so at uh, alan 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 waf mm. alan Dawaf, uh, we depend on harvested rainwater okay. there, or sometimes, occasionally, we have to find, uh, uh, resort to the fire service. Okay. And then, uh, I mean, so what we need there is a mechanized bowhole okay. for officers. Okay. So, yes. So, do you also have a challenge here when it comes to personnel? Yes, the personnel is woefully inadequate. Okay. In fact, the staff strength here is only 22 officers and then nine uh, NAPCO interns. Okay. Wow, 22 uh, personnel of just the only 22 division. personnel officers. I mean, personnel here. Wow, that's and you, all. And you're playing dual roles here? Certainly. Okay. The dual roles in revenue mobilization and then keeping the security, border security here yeah. is, 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 is paramount to our, our mandate. Mm. And so, uh, staff strength here is also equally, in fact, an issue, a big issue that needs to be handled. Okay. Uh -huh. so, so that means that there will be a challenge in terms of uh, when you want to, uh, when, you, when you have to patrol the, what do you call it, the unapproved routes. That means there's a challenge anytime you want certainly, to do that. Certainly, certainly. So right now, uh, the only equipment that for patrol is the canoe. 
Yeah. Yes, because the other roads leading, the access roads leading there are no more trouble. Okay. Yes. I mean, per the pickup, mm -hmm. are not just more trouble at all. Okay. So we are we are reduced to the use of just that dilapidated uh, what do you call it canoe. Mm. But we don't draw with our revenue collection. Okay. The ta a target of six hundred thousand that was given here. Yeah. Uh, so far, we are talking about over eight hundred thousand. Okay. So you've exceeded the target. So we exceeded the target by twenty point three percent so far. And the major issues that we have here, the major uh, items that pass through here, are the um, the copra oil. Mm. Uh, uh, latex, okay. yeah, rubber, and then uh, and uh, occasionally um, oil, oil. Mm -hmm. okay. occasionally oil, cooking oil. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, yes. so you you heard about the issue about the smuggling of you know um, items yes. into Ghana and all of that, yes. and how sometimes it is affecting revenue generation. Yes. Uh, what do you think can be a permanent fix to? This problem. I think the permanent issue, uh, what you call solution or remedy to this problem, will be to increase staff strength here, okay. as well as get us um, more speed boost. You know? okay. Yes, boats that can, you know, maneuver across the river because the unapproved routes uh, yeah. are the major channels that they use to do what to smuggle these things. Mm. And if we are able to handle that, then I think. Smuggling will come to almost uh, to an, it will, it will be non-existent here, okay. given the kind of terrain that we have here. Mm. Okay, it will be non-existent because uh, if you are able to maneuver and do patrols along the river and its yeah. uh, uh, tributaries here, mm. I don't think we'll have problems with uh, okay. this. at least we'll be able to stem down smuggling to mm. a very large so extent. It says, well, welcome to Ghana. Yeah, exactly. So this is the entry point, you know, to yeah, Ghana. To Ghana, yes. Okay. And so um, the entry here has to do with coming through the what? The river into okay. the into the lagoon uh, from Ivory Coast. Yeah. So we all saw from the lagoon, the jetty there, we saw as far back that be, beyond the waters, that is Ivory Coast. Yeah. And like we said, you see somebody has a family here, uh, equally a family there, vice versa, mm. you know, there's a, a, that kind of, <laughs> you can't draw a thin line between the social and cultural, you know, yeah. engagement, mm. okay, but then, uh, when goods come, and they come from the other side, then we, we, have, we have to collect the revenue. So, we're currently here at one of the unapproved routes, um, I'm here in Ghana, if you cross the river tunnel to the other side, you are in Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, I should say. Um, that community there is called Noé. And um, sometimes you have some unscrupulous persons trying to use this unapproved route to smuggle goods um, into um, Ghana. One other thing that caught my attention, though, is the heavily polluted um, river tunnel. And you can see that in the background right now. That is not our focus um, for today. We want to find out from um, the customs division of the Ghana Revenue Authority, how they man um, this place to ensure that the unscrupulous people do not get you know, access to Ghana with some of their smuggled goods. To help me do this is Assistant Revenue um, Officer at the Ilubo um, Collection, A-R-O Fifi Blankson. Fifi, you're welcome to join us. Thank you very much. Great. So this are your mentor. We have immigration officers and then Customs, Customs Division, definitely. you know, the GRA. Right. What, what, is, what is their job here? Well, their job here is to man this uh, unapproved route to ensure that um, people do not ferry goods in and out of the country. Okay. They are supposed to use the um, approved, the approved route, which is the main border. Yeah. And uh, for one reason or the other, you realize that these people come in through some of these, and this is one of the numerous unapproved routes that we have along the stretch mm. and you see because it is a river that divides the two countries yeah. it is it is very easy mm. to you know set up another unapproved route yeah and so once we begin to man a particular route that we identify yeah. the next thing you you see is another one being 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 created wow. yes that is the nature and that is the terrain we find ourselves we find ourselves here these are there are several of them 
and you will see um, canoes being used to ferry goods yeah. and people across, 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 across like that. I was here alone last night. I was at the other side. I was at the other side, but it was actually, you know, um, very difficult yeah. using the side because it was extremely dark, yes. poorly lit. Yes. Um, and your personnel are supposed to be here, so yes. they sit here yes. all the time. Yes. We, Day, night, we man, year. We man this place 24 hours. Okay. As you can see, we even have some tent here. This mm. this one got uh, this one was collapsed. Yeah. Yes, this one was collapsed as a result of of, of the rain, and we have a yeah. this temporary one that we are using. You know, um, so <laughs> we mine here 24 seven. Yeah. So these people by 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. they will they will they will close, and another shift okay. will come and take over. Mm. Right. Okay. Another shift will come and take over from 6 p.m. Okay. And yes. this is this is a tent that you normally use? Yes, this is where the, the officers sit. At night? At night. Okay. Yes, this is where they sit at night mm. to make sure that uh, people do not come in and goods do not come in mm. through these routes. Okay. Yes. So what kind of, what kind of <coughs> goods do people smuggle uh, in? But what happened to the stands? It, it, it collapsed as a result of the rain. Okay. Yes, this, this one was uh, presented by the military. Okay. It was it was given to us by the military, but as you can see, it is it is it is collapsed. Mm. Yes. So you sleep there at night. Yes. Yes. Wow. What, what kind of goods do people try to? Yeah, basically, um, people country? bring in rice, rice, okay. and oil. Okay. Rice, oil. Sometimes you get uh, frozen frozen fish. Mm. Yeah, but basically, it is rice and oil that people bring in the most. Mm. Yes, and, uh, and I'm told that is because it's cheaper very, in very Ivory Coast. Definitely. So yes. Maxwell Agba talking to some customs officials who are manning some unapproved routes uh, where smugglers uh, try to bring in goods from other countries. Now let's do other stories, or actually let's go to our Facebook page and see what you guys have been saying. So we posted this earlier, I had a conversation with producer of Destruction for Gold and in the picture, uh, samples of every river um, stream. So he took some samples there and you guys have been commenting. We have 450 comments. Uh, let's go to Kofi Boacha who says, images of God indeed. Kojo Tamaklo says, they're destroying because they're going to heaven. Please, they shouldn't destroy our earth for us. Uh, let's go to other comments. Um, this one is from Ability Nelson, who says the people have sat on gold for decades with no proper management from leadership to benefit the masses, and they've decided to take control by themselves. For lack of sense of patriotism, selfishness is ruling the minds to our own detriment. Very soon, we will have no dignity to protect. Or say Daniel says nature always pays back will come back to suffer for it. We can deceive ourselves going to heaven after death, but we are the same people. Uh, the creator will send us back here to drink the water we're polluting. Natural juice justice never fails. Bernard says the big men and women don't even use our drinking water to water their garden and wash their cars. So they don't even feel how we feel. It's a shame. They have surrounded themselves with bottled water. Let's go to Geshwin, who says, hashtag four more squad. We'll come and say this is Peter on display, wait and see. Amos says waters from River Water should have been added as a control. The difference would have been uh, really clear. And Nana Kobana says even without the labels on them, each and every chief or queen will be able to identify the respective water because they know they are the cause. God will, God will judge us in Kofiojo's voice. All right, Isaac Sambi says, well, what an awesome achievement. We need to make giant bubbles of this image for national Visibility. We're a proud nation, and I would uh, figure that is sarcasm. More comments coming in from our Facebook uh, page. Let's see what you guys are <coughs> saying. Let's go to Hassan, who says this documentary should win a big award. Dylan Bay says, put a straw in them and tell our leaders to take a sip. They're capable of this destruction. Kweku Afriya says, Galamse has rendered every Ghanaian powerless. We're only a nation of talkers. Uh, this can never happen anywhere in Ukraine. Let us go to Mensa Flash, who says, this is what we expected from the media, to go and 
pick up such important national issues that will benefit the entire generation. We all need to fight against this. That documentary airs tonight at 8.30 p.m. here on the Joy News channel. Also on our Facebook page, it is Joy News on TV. So make sure you do check it out. It's the first uh, part of three, so you don't want to miss it. Hello, Ghana. Happy moment is here. Let's storm World Cup Qatar 2022 with Storm Energy Drink, Puma Soft Drinks and Awake Drinking Water from Christopher Co. Company Limited. Simply buy your favorite Storm Energy Drink, Puma Soft Drinks and Awake Drinking Water. Text the four-digit unique number on the neck of the bottle to short code star 780 hash option 2 and then follow the prompts on all networks for free. Be one of the lucky winners to this year's World Cup in the monthly draw. You can also win TVs, fridges, mobile phones, home theatres, free drinks and more instantly. Don't waste time. Grab a bottle of Storm Energy Drink, Puma Soft Drinks and Awake Drinking Water and let's storm Qatar this World Cup. This promotion is on the NLA Characters platform and this advert is FDA approved. Terms and conditions apply. And that is where we draw the curtains on the AM show. I've been doing this with Benjamin Kakpo. My name is Mopito CBD. You can also... Uh, Keep on being interactive with us on our Facebook and Twitter pages. We are Joy News on TV. Please stay. Up next is News Desk.